And this update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply has brought back their 25% discount on their three month emergency food supply. And to get the discount, you got to use the link preparewithnyprepper.com. And the link is in the description below this video. But this three month emergency food supply has a 25 year shelf life. It includes over 2,000 calories per day. Breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks all contained within six rugged water resistant buckets and free shipping is included. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $200 off or 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three month emergency food supply. The link is in the description below this video. Free shipping is included. They also have a general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products and they're always running various discounts. And to get to their general store, you just got to click on the My Patriot Supply logo when you get to preparewithnyprepper.com at the top of the page and you'll see their general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products and they're always running discounts here. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply, and the link is in the description below this video. Guys, the world is getting crazier by the day. We're on the verge of World War III. The U.S. is drowning in trillions of dollars in debt. Inflation is at an all-time high, and there's no end in sight. So you need to prepare your finances for the future with precious metals. Precious metals are a great way to protect your hard-earned savings and retirement against inflation and the uncertainty of the stock market. Also, precious metals are good to have for the purposes of preparedness to be able to barter with people for essential supplies if the grid goes down. Every prepper should have at least a small amount of silver coins. The company I trust for my precious metals is Midas Gold Group. Text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information on precious metals. Midas Gold Group is 100% veteran owned and supports veterans through the Wounded Warrior Project. Midas Gold Group will work with you to convert part of your retirement savings into gold or to set up a gold IRA. And unlike many precious metals dealers, Midas Gold Group offers precious metals in small denominations, which is great for preparedness, so you have something tangible to use for bartering when the grid goes down. Precious metals have continuously risen in price over the past 100 years and are considered a safe investment. So text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information and to get started today. What's going on, guys? Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see me. Thanks to all the moderators for showing up. I appreciate it. Okay, no visual, but you can hear me. Okay, you can hear me. Sounds good. How's everybody doing? Hope you guys are having a good Thursday night. Um, yeah, something's wrong with my camera, it looks like. That's weird. Strange.
So yeah, we got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. We have uh, nuclear forces here in the U.S. on high alert right now. So we're going to talk about that. We have a lot of stuff going on in Russia and Ukraine and uh, Belarus. We're going to talk about Belarus. I just got off the phone with uh, Lee Wilbarger. We were chatting for a couple hours, and uh, it looks like Belarus is going to attack Lithuania and Poland. So um, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about that. And uh, Lee Wilbarger is going to do a more detailed analysis of that um, later on on his channel. So... Kim Cape says, nice beard. Thank you very much, Kim. I appreciate that. What's going on, Campbell Clan? Pork Eating Crusader, thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. What's going on, Holly Hobby, Rodney Middleton, Cynthia, Smoky Mountain Prepper, Ross Snyderman. All the moderators, thank you guys for showing up. Angela Dunn, Country Christian, good to see you. Uh, Mr. Landfill, thank you for gifting 20 memberships. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And Open Minds, thank you for gifting 10 memberships. That's awesome. Thank you very, very much. Hope you're having a good Thursday night. And Light Source Engraving, good to see you. Hope you're doing well thank you for gifting the 10 memberships. And Hick Chick, thank you for the donation. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So, um, yes, it is Tiatiawaki. Yep, the end of the world as we know it. Um, yeah, we're basically already in World War III. It's just the powers that be, they don't want us to know that we're in World War III. But we are basically in World War III right now. Um, you know, they don't want you to know that, obviously, because they don't want to cause panic. But um, we're basically in World War III right now. So get prepared, guys. Make sure you have a nuclear war survival plan. Sandman, thank you for the donation, Sandman. Hope you're doing well. Joe Romanino, good to see you. Thanks for showing up. Mike is a little bit choppy. Okay, interesting. Let me see. Um, hopefully it'll improve. It's probably because I had the uh, camera on and using a lot of RAM on my computer. So I have like 50 windows open right now to share all the news with you guys. Let me... So let me know if uh, it's still choppy as we go through the update. If it gets really bad, let me know and I'll figure out a way to uh, make it better. I think it's just because of the, the camera plus all these screens I have open. It's probably just drawing a lot of RAM. So hope you guys are doing well. Um, Judy Fugate, thank you for gifting 20 memberships. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And Sandman, once again, thank you for the donation, Sandman. Deborah, thank you so much. God bless you, Greg. Stay strong. Thank you, Deborah. I appreciate that. And Charles and Christina, thank you for the donation. Hope you're doing well, Charles and Christina. Thank you so much. Old Spice One, how's it going, Old Spice? Good to see you. So um, let's talk about the nuclear forces, guys. We have a lot of nuclear warplanes in the air today. As you can see here on the screen, there are three Boeing E-6B Mercury nuclear war command and control planes in the air right now. And that's a total of six. If you count these plus a couple of earlier in the day, 
that were in the air. There's a total of six. There was a total of six of these planes in the air today, which is a lot, okay? Six Boeing E6B Mercury planes in the air this afternoon. Now, that's not what's got me very concerned. That's very concerning, but the last couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of this, okay? So this is nothing new um, as far as the last few weeks go. And I was probably the only channel on YouTube and probably the only person that reported like two weeks ago when there were eight of these in the air in one day, which I have never seen in the last three or four years of tracking these, okay? And I was probably the only person to catch that. Nobody was talking about it but me. And um, I watch these planes every single day like a hawk because they give an indication of what's going to happen. And when you see a lot of these planes in the air, it usually means something is about to happen. But in addition to all these planes in the air, we had three nuke sniffer planes in the air today. And they were flying back to back. Okay, so they started this afternoon. There were two in the air this afternoon, and now we have a third one in the air. And the nuke sniffer planes or the WC-135 Constant Phoenix planes, what they do is they sample the atmosphere for radiation so they can detect if there's any radiation around the world. And so we had three of them up in the air today, which I've personally never seen in one afternoon. To have three of them in the air is extremely unusual. So. Let me just show you guys what we have in the air right now. So right now we have one off the coast of San Francisco. And it did this big square rectangle over Northern California. And then it went out to sea here and it was looping over here basically all evening. And now it's off the coast of San Francisco. And uh, that's one E6. And then here we have another E6 over Cedar Rapids, Iowa right now. And this thing, flew all over the Midwest. Look at that, guys, over Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota. And um, here we have the nuke sniffer plane, Hoover 29, which is now looping over Offutt Air Base. And this thing was uh, looping over Sioux City earlier. Okay, so this is the third nuke sniffer plane in the air today. And then there was another E-6 that uh, just landed in uh, Travis Air Force Base, okay? So three nuke sniffers, six uh, E-6 Mercuries so far today, and then there was also a B-52. Let me show you guys uh, what we had in the air earlier. So here you can see multiple uh, E-6s, okay? Uh, five of them on this uh, screen right here, on the, in this screenshot. Okay, and then there was the sixth one, which is up in the air now. So a total of six in the air today. And uh, let's see if I can show you um, the earlier nuke sniffers. So these were the two nuke sniffers that were airborne earlier. We had Cobra 36 and Snoop 29. That's their call signs. And they were all flying in the same area as the one that's flying now. Um, and then here's a B-52 flying over Kentucky earlier. Okay, so something's going on, guys. You don't have three nuke sniffers in the air, six nuclear war command and control planes, and a B-52 flying over the continental U.S. Uh, in one afternoon for no reason. And this is not training. Okay, this is not training. They don't train like this. So something is going on. Our nuclear forces are on high alert. And we had major breaking news that uh, came in yesterday that uh, Russia was announcing the creation of two new ground armies, which is going to include 16 brigades and 14 new divisions, which, according to experts, could amount to three quarters of a million troops. OK, so Russia's building two new armies with 16 brigades, 14 divisions. And that could amount to three quarters of a million troops, guys. That is absolutely insane, okay? So um, that is very, very serious. We also had major breaking news that came in from the Institute for the Study of War, 
and they were saying that Russia is planning to go to war with NATO. They're preparing for it right now, okay? And that was uh, released in their latest update. So I'm going to read to you what the Institute for the Study of War said, okay? So here's their website. This is their update on March 20th, Russian Offensive Campaign Assessment. Several Russian financial, economic, and military indicators suggest that Russia is preparing for a large-scale conflict with NATO, not imminently, but likely in a shorter timeline than what some Western analysts have initially posited. Okay, so I'll read that to you again. Several Russian financial, economic, and military indicators suggest that Russia is preparing for a large scale conventional conflict with NATO, not imminently, but likely on a shorter timeline than what some Western analysts have initially posited. I don't know why they have to use these big words to try to sound like they're smart or something. Uh, so this is very concerning guys. And the Institute for the Study of War is extremely careful with what they say, okay? They're a Washington, D.C.-based think tank. They're not by any means alternative media. They're, you know, the total opposite of alarmists or sensationalists. You know, they're always very cautious in their assessments. And for them to say something like this is extremely alarming, okay? Russian President Vladimir Putin met with the leaders of Russian state Duma factions on March 19th and outlined priorities for his fifth presidential term. Putin emphasized the importance of developing the Russian economy and expanding the social programs announced in his February 29th address to the Federation Council. Putin claimed on March 19th that he personally witnessed how corporate interests fueled appointments to legislative bodies while he was working in Leningrad and later St. Petersburg, although he himself likely made substantial commissions from illegally endorsed contracts and licenses while serving as the St. Petersburg deputy mayor, blah, blah, blah. Um, Putin is likely attempting to set conditions to stabilize Russia's long-term financial position at a higher level of government expenditure and is signaling that Russia's long-term financial stability re will require imposing at least some pain on the wealthy industrialist Siloviki. Putin likely understands that financial crackdowns against industrialist Siloviki could risk the political rapport Putin has built with them and is trying to mitigate these consequences. Russia does not appear to be facing imminent financial crisis and increased military spending has been the most significant change in Russian budgetary policy. Um, according to the IMF, uh, Russia's GDP will grow by 2.6% in 2024. So uh, their GDP is still growing, guys. These sanctions have had zero effect on Russia, okay? Zero effect. And, you know, our leaders in the West are, are extremely weak. They're uh, afraid of Putin. And they thought that, oh, yeah, we're just going to give Russia sanctions and they're going to collapse. Well, no, that's not going to happen. OK, it's not happening. And, uh, you know, it's just it's just crazy how these leaders here in the West, um, you know, they they're just so weak. They're so afraid of Putin and they don't want to do anything. So they just, you know, slap sanctions on him, which is not going to do anything at all. Um, sanctions never do anything. It's just a bunch of BS. KL, thank you for gifting 20 memberships, actually 40 memberships. Thank you, KL. For gifting 40 memberships that's incredible hope you're having a good thursday night and lee billy thank you for gifting 20 memberships i appreciate that and viper optics thank you for gifting 10 memberships you're the man thank you guys so much hope you're doing well um Polish President Andrzej Duda emphasized in a March 20 interview with CNBC that Putin is intensifying efforts to shift Russia to a war economy with the intention of being able to attack NATO as early as 2026 or 2027, citing unspecified German research. Danish Defense Minister Trolls Lund Polson 
stated on February 9th that new intelligence indicates that Russia may attempt to attack a NATO country within three to five years, an accelerated timeline from NATO's reported assessment in 2023. The timeline for the reconstitution of a significant Russian conventional military threat depends heavily on the financial resources Putin is willing to put against military efforts. In the absence of other explanations for Putin's apparent preparations to risk damaging his relationship with re wealthy Russian clients and in the context of continuing announcements of plans to expand the Russian military, considered below Putin's attempts to set conditions to stabilize Russia's economy and finances are most likely part of Russian financial and domestic preparations for a potential future large-scale conflict with NATO and not just for a protracted war in Ukraine, okay? So Putin is, is overhauling the economy, making sure that Russia is on a good economic footing to prepare Russia for a potential future large scale conflict with NATO, not just for a protracted war in Ukraine. So it's coming guys. I know a lot of people don't like to hear this. It's not pleasant. But war with Russia is coming. It's, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, okay? And it could happen this year before uh, Trump gets elected and, you know, Putin may want to make his move while, you know, he feels that he's still in a good position and uh, while the West is still being run by an 83-year-old guy who can't even remember where he is half the time. Um, so... You know, get prepared, guys. Things are about to really escalate. And I was on the phone with Lee Wheelbarger for probably about two hours this afternoon, and we were going over these bases in Belarus. We found a bunch of these different bases in Belarus, literally just several miles from the Polish border that are just loaded with missiles, air defenses, artillery, hel attack helicopters, uh, all kinds of stuff, barracks just within a few miles of the Polish border, okay? And yesterday he found uh, on satellite imagery a massive train with like a hundred cars full of fuel going to one of these bases just two miles from the Polish border. And so, you know, uh, it's very possible that Belarus could try to attack Poland and Lithuania at the same time as Russia moves, you know, a hundred plus thousand troops to the eastern part of Ukraine and tries to break through near Donetsk, you know, they could attack from multiple fronts at the same time. So it all kicked off very soon. As soon as the ground dries up in Eastern Europe, which is going to be pretty soon because this winter has been very mild in Eastern Europe and the Northern Hemisphere in general. So there's not a lot of snow cover and the ground is going to dry up relatively soon. I'm thinking next month, and when we're going to start to see things really kick into high gear and we're going to see Russia make a huge move on Ukraine and we're going to see um, Belarus attack Lithuania and Poland possibly at the same time to distract NATO and to fix NATO forces in those areas. They may make a limited incursion into Poland and, Bel uh, and Lithuania. Maybe they will go in just a few miles. Okay. Um, but, you know, Lee Wilbarger, he, he's got just detailed analysis of all these different bases um, where all this equipment is just literally a few miles from the Polish border and the Lithuanian border. Uh, Chris RV, thank you for gifting 10 memberships. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And Mud and Munitions, thank you for gifting 20 memberships. I hope you're having a good um, Thursday night. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate the support. What's going on, Bradley Moore? Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. So, um, you know, things are just spiraling out of control. Okay, so the Institute for the Study of War is basically saying that Russia is trying to get on a good financial footing for a large-scale conventional conflict with NATO. All right, so they're preparing for it, guys. Um, I mean, you know, Putin, he's a hard, he's a hard liner. Okay. He's a hard liner. 
he was a KGB agent. He started working in the KGB at like age 18. And so, um, you know, he was very loyal to the Soviet Union. He was loyal to communism. And he still has the same mentality for him. For him, he feels like the collapse of the Soviet Union, what he even said it himself, it was the biggest catastrophe of the 20th century. That's what he said. For most people, it was the greatest thing that happened in the 20th century was the collapse of the Soviet Union, okay? Because there were lots of people that became free. They weren't under communism anymore. Um, but for him, it was like the worst thing. He even said it in his own words, okay? So Putin is a communist down to the core. He's, a, he's a, a Soviet communist down to his core, and he's aligning himself with China, with Iran, all the enemies of Israel, okay? Uh, he supports Hamas. He's anti-Israel. He's pro-Hamas. Um, you know, he invited Hamas leaders to Moscow a few weeks back, you know, and so he's still stuck in the 1970s you know, or 1980s when he was... KGB agent. That's he still feels like that's where we are today, and we're not. We're in 2024. We're not in 1980, but in his mind, he thinks we're still in 1980, and he's still that KGB agent working in East Germany trying to fight for communism. You know, he was fighting for communism. He was defending communism. He was working against America. He was working for communism, and he's still in that mentality now. Okay, and he feels like. He may be the last opportunity to restore the Soviet Union, you know, because he feels probably the next Russian president. Who knows, you know, if if they're going to have that same hardline mentality. So, you know, he's at the point in his life now where he's got nothing to lose. OK, he's in his 70s. Uh, he's in his early 70s. So he's got a couple more years to do stuff. He's not going to he's not going to wait until he's 80 years old to make moves. He's going to do it now. While he's still healthy, while he still has momentum, okay, he's got momentum on his side right now. He's not going to wait three to five years like some of these NATO leaders, okay? These NATO leaders, they also said Russia would never invade Ukraine. You remember all these uh, European leaders they said, oh, Russia would never invade Ukraine. They would never do that, okay? And sure enough, they did. So you can't listen to their predictions because their, their predictions are all lies, basically, to try to quell panic and keep people from panicking. They're hiding the truth, okay? So um, he's not gonna wait three to five years. He's gonna do it soon while he still has the momentum. Right now, I hate to say it, but Russia is winning the war, okay? I hate to say it, you know, uh, I support Ukraine, but the reality is Russia is winning the war, okay? They've taken 20% or more of Ukraine's territory and Ukraine has not really been able to take much back. They took back uh, Kherson and Kharkiv, and that's it. And now Russia is making small gains in various areas, and it's going to be a while before Ukraine gets any uh, reinforcements. Okay, they've run out of artillery. They've run out of uh, men, and, and they're not going to be able to replace that in a week or two. So Russia has... Uh, the advantage right now, okay? They have the momentum and they're going to make their move now while they have the momentum. They're going to strike the iron while it's hot. You know, they're not going to wait five years like some of these NATO leaders are saying. By then, Putin could be dead and he knows it. So he's going to do it now while he feels like, you know, he's healthy enough and uh, while they have the momentum, okay? So I think it's all going to kick off like starting next month. I think it's all going to start kicking off. And I think we're going to see uh, Russia launch a huge offensive this year starting next month, but going into the summer, a huge offensive against Ukraine, bigger than anything we've seen yet so far. And, uh, and we, we could see Belarus make moves on Lithuania and Poland at the same time. So, um, you know, I hope I'm wrong. You know, I hope it doesn't happen that way. But we have to just be prepared for that because it's very possible. Um, Amber Zjaki, thank you for the donation. I hope you're having a good Thursday. Hope everything's going well with you. Thank you very much. Yeah, Putin is a nutcase. Yep, exactly. He's nuts. Um, he's living... 
He's living in a different time. You know, he, he doesn't think that we're in 2024. He's still stuck in the 1980s, okay? In his mind, he's still that, that KGB agent. Amber says, thank you. You're the best. Oh, thank you so much, Amber. That's so kind of you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, so let me just go through some other stuff here. We also have this situation on the border here in the U.S. Um, show you guys some footage here from the border. This is insane. There were some riots on the border uh, earlier today. Check this out. They were, they were storming the border, the U.S. border. All these illegal immigrants were charging the border, trying to get in. Good thing there's a fence there. Okay, but you have all these illegal immigrants trying to get into our country. Okay, and um, I mean, this is insane. Look at this, guys. This is just absolutely insane. Uh, they want to live here for free, not pay taxes, have all the benefits of being an American without having to pay for it, which is not fair to us, you know, the American citizens. Uh, there's no country on earth that allows people to just walk in into their country. I mean, even the European countries have very strict border controls, probably stricter than we do. And we allow all these illegal immigrants to just run run over the border. Um, you know, charity, charity can only go so far. You know, we have to look out for our interests and for our own survival. Um, here's an even crazier video. Check this out. Look at this, guys. It's just absolutely insane. There was like a little opening in the fence here, and they were trying to get through, and you can see the National Guardsmen uh, trying to block them from getting in. Look, look at this, guys. This is insane. It looks like they actually broke through. Check that out. And then they get to the larger fence, and the larger fence stops them. So, um, you know, thank God for that larger fence. I mean, this is just absolutely insane. And for all we know, this could be a hybrid attack. It's very possible that Russia or China sent these uh, immigrants here on purpose to charge the border. They did this with Poland like two or three years ago. It was actually three years ago. They sent a bunch of migrants to the border of Poland. And, uh, you know, it could have been, it's, it's like a form of attack, basically. Um, And last night, there was a massive missile attack on Ukraine. Here we have a video of people in the capital of Ukraine taking shelter in the metro station in Kyiv. And what a lot of people don't know is that Kyiv, the, the metro stations, are basically like bomb shelters. Uh, they were built to be bomb shelters uh, by Stalin and uh, the Soviet leadership. During the Cold War, they built the uh, the train stations in Kiev to be uh, resistant to nuclear blasts, and they basically made them into bomb shelters. So, um, you know, the the capital of Ukraine, their train stations are basically uh, like bunkers. Okay, so you can see all these people here waiting out the missile strike. There were uh, dozens of missiles launched. Uh, the Ukrainian government is saying that they intercepted 32 uh, or 31 missiles. I think they shot down two uh, ballistic missiles and 29 cruise missiles. So over 30 missiles the Ukrainians are claiming to have shot down. But what's interesting is Ukraine is not really um, releasing details of these missile strikes anymore. They're keeping the details like secret because they don't want Russia to know where they're hitting with the missiles and use their, you know, like free battle damage assessment, essentially, um, you know, because in the beginning of the war, Ukraine would say, oh, there were 100 missiles launched at Ukraine and we shot down this amount and they went for this city and that city and they hit here and they hit there. And they had very specific details. And now Ukraine is not giving out those details anymore because the uh, Russian military was using those details as like free battle damage assessment so they could see 
what missiles were actually hitting their targets, which missiles didn't hit their targets. So then they're going to try again. So um, they, they don't do that anymore. So it's hard to know the extent of these strikes. But the strike last night must have been very severe because there were over 10 uh, Russian bombers in the air. Okay, so um, there were 10 of the uh, the uh, TU-95 bear bombers. Okay, 10 of them were in the air last night. So each one of those bear bombers can carry probably about a dozen cruise missiles. So you got to figure they launched probably 100 missiles at Ukraine last night. And I think this is just the beginning. I think you, uh, Russia is going to uh, start launching more missiles at Ukraine. And um, the situation in, in Eastern Europe is going to spiral out of control. Okay, it's going to get worse and worse. Russia feels like they have the momentum now. Okay, Putin has the momentum. I hate to say it. Okay, I support Ukraine. I love Ukraine. I love the Ukrainian people. But, you know, I want them to win. I want their country to be free again. I want the war to end. I want them to reclaim their territories. But Russia's winning now, okay? And the sooner that we realize that, the sooner we can make a, a plan of attack to reverse it. R Russia's basically won. If, they, if, if Russia basically stopped the war now, they would still come out on top. If Putin just gave up right now and he said, oh, I don't feel like fighting anymore. Let's just end the war. He would still come out on top because he's taken like 20% or whatever of Ukraine's territory. He has an entire land bridge to Crimea now. Okay, he has a, a whole land bridge to Crimea, a substantial land bridge, and he captured the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, okay, with six nuclear reactors. He could turn those reactors on and start, you know, getting power for free, um, you know, from those reactors. So um, the sooner we realize it, the, the sooner we can have a proper plan to deal with it. But the problem is the Western leaders in NATO, the U.S., they constantly say, oh, Ukraine is winning. Ukraine is winning. Well, how could they be winning if you know, they lost like 20% of their territory and their people are hiding in train stations. That Do you call this winning? You know, our leaders are ridiculous here, you know? It's just absolutely ridiculous. So, Renee Norwalk, thank you for the donation. If Biden is reelected, how will World War III be impacted? Uh... Well, if Biden if Biden gets reelected, I think it's definite that World War III is going to happen because because Putin is not afraid of Biden. OK, he's not afraid of Biden. And so he's going to make his moves. All right. And if Trump gets elected, I think Putin is going to slow down with some of his more provocative actions, like going after Lithuania or the Suwalki Gap or attacking NATO territories, essentially going after Moldova, some of these other places, Putin is going to chill out because he knows that Trump is a little more unpredictable, actually a lot more unpredictable, okay? Because we flat out said in the beginning of the war, we flat out said, we're not going to send troops into Ukraine. We're not, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. And Putin basically saw that Biden was weak. He was afraid and the Western countries are afraid. And so, you know, he's just doing what he wants to do, basically, you know. Um, it's like the prison guards have left the prison, essentially, and the prisoners are just doing whatever they want, um, you know. And so uh, if Biden gets reelected, I think it's 100 percent guarantee that there's going to be World War Three. We're already in World War Three right now. We just don't realize it. Like I said, we're already in the beginning stages of World War Three, guys. OK. Look at how many casualties are in Ukraine right now, okay? Between the Russian and Ukrainian casualties, you're looking at a half a million casualties in Ukraine alone. I can't remember the last time in, in my lifetime there's ever been any war with that many casualties. You, you're going to have to go all the way back to Korea and World War II to see that kind of casualty number, okay? Half a million casualties between... Uh, Russia and Ukraine, okay? 
Guys, that is th th this is not some tiny conflict that's just going to magically go away. Okay, that's what that's what they want you to think. They want you to think, oh yeah, this is just another another little flare up around the world, and it's just going to magically go away. It's not going to go away, guys. Okay, like I said, Putin still thinks he's in 1980 East Germany, and he's holding down the fort. Okay, in his mind, Putin is still that. KGB agent in East Germany holding down the line near the Berlin Wall, okay? And when the Berlin Wall collapsed, I don't know if you guys know the story about Putin, but when the Berlin Wall collapsed, there were all these Germans that crossed into East Germany and they were rioting and they were attacking all the communist buildings and, you know, burning down the communist buildings and, and they went right after the, the KGB headquarters in East Germany in uh, East, I think it was East Berlin is where uh, Putin was, but they went to Putin's KGB building and they tried to attack it and burn it down. And he went outside with a gun and shot the gun in the air, I think. And he said, you're not going to attack this, this office. And, you know, that's his same mentality. He's that same, you know, I'm the, I'm this KGB agent holding down the fort and it's up to me to make sure that the Soviet Union is, is resurrected from the dead, basically. OK, and if it's not going to be, it's not going to if it's not going to be me, it's not going to be anyone else. Um, so Putin is very dangerous right now. Very, very dangerous. T.W. Perry says Russia put bombers in the air again tonight. OK, um, that's good to know. That's definitely good to know. John Jones, thank you so much for gifting 10 memberships. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. And Chris RV, thank you for gifting 10 memberships. Um, hope you're having a good Thursday night. So get prepared, guys. Things are, uh, you know, we're on the verge of, of total chaos, okay? We're running, we're running out of time to prepare. Um, and here we have a video that was released by the Russian Ministry of Defense, and it shows Sergei Shoigu visiting a factory where they're building Fab 3000 bombs, and these bombs are 6,000-pound bombs, guys. Look at the size of these bombs. These are conventional. They're not nuclear, okay? But look at this thing. This looks, it says, uh, it looks like Fab 3000. You can see the writing right there. Um, but look at how, how tiny Shoigu looks compared to that bomb. I mean, they're mass producing these 6,000 pound bombs, guys. And what are we doing here in the West? Nothing. We're not doing anything. Okay. They're mass producing. They're going into a wartime economy. The Polish president said multiple times that they're going into a wartime economy. They're they're allocating 30% of their uh, budget for the military. 30% of their budget, guys. That's insane. Can you think the last time that we allocated 30% of our budget to the military? Uh, I don't know what it's at now, but, you know, that's insane, okay? So they're getting ready for uh, a war with NATO. They're, they're getting ready to, you know... Uh, give the death blow to Ukraine. They're going to try to go for the jugular. I think this year they're going to try to go for Kiev. They're going to try to go for Odessa. And that's why the French president, Emmanuel Macron, is uh, panicking and he's threatening to send French troops into the war because he sees the writing on the wall. He sees the situation. You know, I'm not a big fan of Macron. I mean, politically, I'm totally opposite of him. But you know, he's obviously not a stupid guy, okay? I mean, well, he is kind of stupid for, for uh, a lot of things, but um, he sees what's going on, okay? He sees that Russia, you know, like I, like I said at the beginning of the stream, you know, Russia is going to be building two new armies, which could amount to three quarters of a million troops, guys, okay? What is it, 16 divisions? Let me see, what did I say? 16 new brigades and 14 divisions, okay? That is absolutely insane, guys. What are you going to do with 16 brigades and 14 divisions if it's not for a war? What else are you going to do with that if it's just to maintain the front lines where they are, 
Okay, they're going to try to go for the capital again. They're going to try to go for Odessa. Maybe they're going to go for Odessa first. I don't know. But, um, you know, they're continuing to take small amounts of territory from Ukraine, especially near Donetsk. Um, you know, the Ukrainians started building all these fortifications outside of Odessa in recent weeks. And I showed pictures of that in my uh, stream a couple of days ago. I'll see if I can find the pictures for you guys uh, tonight. But they're building massive bunkers and fortifications near Odessa because they're afraid Russia is going to come in and take Odessa and cut them off from the Black Sea, which would basically destroy Ukraine's economy. You know, that would be like, you know, imagine if, uh, you know, China took over California, Oregon, and Washington, you know, or something, and half of our uh, ports were under their control. I mean, that would devastate our economy or, you know, whatever. If they took over the East Coast, same thing. I mean, that would devastate our economy. So this is a very serious situation, but here we have a video showing uh, Sergei Shoigu inspecting a factory where Russia is mass producing these 6,000 pound bombs, guys. Look at these things, okay? Where do you think they're going to be using these? Th these are meant for Ukraine. They're going to be dropping these on Ukraine very soon, okay? Do you know what kind of devastation this is going to cause if this thing lands in a city somewhere in Kharkiv or Kiev? I mean, you know, 6,000 pounds, guys. That's like six times the size of the... Um, Nice gander warheads that they use or the Kinzel warheads, those are like a thousand pounds or 500 pounds. So, you know, six times the size. Okay, so just imagine what kind of devastation that would create. Um, yeah, big kaboom, very big kaboom. That's right. What's going on, Smoking Swamp? Thanks for showing up. I hope you're doing well. Hey, Paul, thanks for showing up. It's good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Um, so, you know, Russia's getting ready for a big push. Okay, They're getting ready for a big push, and I think we're going to see it sooner rather than later because the momentum is on their side. They're going to make their move before the West can rearm Ukraine Okay, because uh, the West is scrambling now to rearm Ukraine. And even if, let's say, right now, NATO said, oh, yeah, we have all this equipment and we can send it to Ukraine right away, it would still take several weeks for that ammo and, and stuff to get to the front lines. You know, Even if right now, today, they said, oh, yeah, we have all this equipment and we can send it to the front right away, it's still going to take weeks and weeks for it to arrive. And the West hasn't even decided yet. They're still voting uh, you know, here in the U.S., they haven't decided on any Ukraine aid package yet. OK, so it could be months before Ukraine gets more equipment. OK, just to be realistic, it's not going to be in the next month or two. That's for sure. They may get some little trickle of equipment here and there. They, they're going to get some F-16s potentially. OK, but not enough to change the war. And now Russia's in a position where they could send, you know, three quarters of a million troops as cannon fodder uh, right to the front lines and make a breakthrough. And, you know, they're going to lose, Ukraine is going to lose more territory essentially. So um, you know, I hope and pray that that doesn't happen, but it, it could, it very well could. So we'll have to wait and see, but very disturbing information coming out of Belarus. Lots of uh, Belarusian forces massing on the border with, uh, Poland. Let me just show you guys some stuff here. Um, for those of you guys that haven't really seen my updates this week. So uh, open source intelligence has shown that Russia or Belarus has moved one of their mechanized brigades to within 16 kilometers of the Lithuanian border. Okay, the 19th mechanized brigade of the Belarusian army will be redeployed to Padalyani village, okay? And Padalyani village is literally just 10 miles from the border of Lithuania, okay? And, and this was actually stated uh, by the Belarusian military, and this brigade actually went on to a wartime status, 
Okay, so this brigade that's been deployed to 10 miles from Lithuania is now on a wartime status, and they uh, drafted like thousands of uh, conscripts for this wartime status, okay? So, you know, they're not moving a brigade to Lithuania and putting them on wartime status for no reason and drafting thousands of troops for, for that purpose for no reason at all, okay? So uh, very concerning, guys. And that brigade has 62 T-72s, 219 combat armored vehicles, 78 artillery systems, 14 air defense systems. So they have a lot of equipment at their disposal. Okay, and there were uh, eyewitnesses that saw this brigade unloading all their tanks at this uh, train station close to the Lithuanian border, and uh, that was in Ashmiani. You can look on the map how close Ashmiani and Padaliani, it's right next to uh, Vilnius. Vilnius is the capital of Lithuania. It's just a, just a straight road right to, Lithu uh, right to Vilnius. So. And they set up an armed checkpoint just a few miles from the border. And they have a T-72 and a BMP now on that uh, border there with Lithuania. So pretty crazy, guys. Um, here we have a picture of some of that uh, brigade there uh, training all these BMPs here. And these BMPs are perfectly built for the terrain over there. They don't use a lot of fuel. They're small and maneuverable. They can cross wetlands. They're amphibious vehicles. They can float through water. Okay. And that area of the world, there's a lot of water everywhere. Okay. So get prepared, guys. And we also have a massive amount of equipment that's been moved to uh, Greece. Here's a picture coming out of uh, Greece. And the U.S. military has moved thousands of, of pieces of equipment into Greece, all different kinds of equipment, Bradley's tanks. And, um, you know, apparently they're going to Bulgaria now, but uh, looks like they're destined for Eastern Europe. You know, they're probably going to go to Romania and then maybe into Ukraine, okay? And here we have a video uh, coming out of uh, Greece, somewhere in Greece, this train showing um, all this equipment. So we still have a lot more news to cover. This is just the beginning. A lot of news tonight to go through. Uh, yeah, America is not what it used to be, unfortunately. Yeah, people are people are not afraid of us anymore. Um, it's it's unfortunate because America uh, balances out the world. You know, um, you know, America balances out the world. If we're weak and we're not showing strength around the world, then uh, you know, the communist governments take over and they run the show. And that's what's happening right now. This this axis, this new axis of evil, you know, Russia, China, North Korea, they're they're doing what they want. You know. You know, they're doing what they want. So do I think North North America could collapse? Um, I hope not. It's it's definitely possible though. Definitely possible. What's going on, Renee? How's it going? Much love from Vegas. Missile attack underway across central and southern Ukraine. Thanks for sharing that, Ross. I'll go into that at the end of uh, – once I get through all the breaking news, I'll, I'll cover that. i got to get through the other news first. Anyone think this eclipse will lead to a black swan? Um. I don't know, but I know that Ramadan ends right around the eclipse. From what I understand is that Ramadan is going to be ending during the eclipse. And, you know, lately it's been pretty quiet in the Middle East. We haven't seen as many attacks on U.S. bases. We haven't seen the Houthis attacking as much. Um, even Hezbollah has slowed down their attacks on Israel. But that doesn't mean that it's over. They're taking a break for Ramadan. Okay, Once Ramadan ends, they're going to go back. 
and they're going to escalate their attacks. They're going to regroup and rearm, and they're going to prepare for more attacks. Okay, so you know, in addition to what's going on with Ukraine, we have to worry about the Middle East too. Okay, right now the Middle East has been quiet. You know, thank God. But that's going to pick up again soon, and it's all going to kick off at the same time. Uh, Ukraine, Europe. Um, the Middle East, it's all going to pop off at the same time. So, but uh, let me just show you guys what's on this train. If you didn't see my update earlier, we have some uh, armored recovery vehicles here, which you use when uh, vehicles get stuck in mud or they get turned over, or if they get destroyed partially, you need a, a way of towing them out of the battlefield. So they have armored recovery vehicles here. You can see Bradleys here, a bunch of Bradleys. Then you have some armored personnel carriers and some medical vehicles here, a bunch of medical vehicles, more medical vehicles. So, um, you know, pretty interesting. And uh, the uh, Polish military is doing tank exercises just miles from the Russian border. Here we have a picture of a Polish K2 Black Panther tank. And the K2 Black Panther tank is a uh, South Korean tank. And they're doing this training just a few miles from the Russian border in northern Poland. Okay, they moved one of their best uh, tank brigades to within just a few miles of Kaliningrad. Okay, normally in, in uh, peacetime, actually just in general, Poland keeps most of their, their uh, tank forces and their artillery regiments a lot of them are in the western part of Poland and in the central part. Same thing with their fighter jets. Most of their fighter jets are in the central western part of Poland. And the reason why is they want to have a little space from Russia and Belarus. So for them to move one of their tank brigades to uh, the border of, of Russia is very serious. Okay. Because they wouldn't do that unless there was something going on. Because having them there exposes them. Um, the uh, partisans in Russia are continuing their assault on uh, Russian territory. We have a video showing uh, the Russian partisans shelling some area uh, in Belgorod. Okay, so uh, they're continuing to um, assault the Belgorod Oblast and the Kursk Oblast, and it's gotten so bad that apparently Russia is is dropping. Uh, fab 500 bombs now on some of these cities and some of these towns to try to uh eliminate the the partisans and for all we know this video here could be showing a russian missile and not a partisan missile and in other words russia is basically shelling its own city its own territory to to try to eliminate the uh partisans okay and from what i've read is that the russian military has leveled the almost the entire town of kazinka kazinka is like right near the border with ukraine and the uh russian partisans have been fighting hard in kazinka and from what i'm hearing is the russian military has basically leveled that whole village with uh artillery here's another video showing an artillery shell going off in uh Belgorod, okay, so the situation there is is still uh, still ongoing. The partisans are still in Russia. They haven't been kicked out yet, okay? The Russian military is struggling to kick them out. From what I heard is that uh, the uh, Spetsnaz were sent in to try to eliminate the uh, – partisans okay they sent in spetsnaz to try to eliminate the partisans and the partisans ended up eliminating the spetsnaz okay and i shared some video footage a few days ago in one of my updates showing one of the partisans using a uh, anti-tank missile to destroy a, a t8 it looked like uh in that area so you know these partisans they're they're kicking butt okay and uh, there's no end in sight there's no there's no sign that um, it's it's ending, okay? The Russian military is struggling, so they're being forced to shell their own territory now. Um, 
And here we have some video footage uh, showing uh, a fishing vessel in the Baltic Sea that the Russians apparently shelled. They shelled their own fishing vessel, okay? They, they apparently like four fishermen died, but there's the vessel smoking, okay? So that's pretty crazy. They shelled their own fishing vessel, absolutely insane. Um, so pretty crazy situation. Um, what's going on, New York Adventure? Good to see you. I hope you're doing well. How's it going, Vanessa? Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. And if anybody's just tuning in right now, if you missed the beginning of the stream, then just go back uh, and rewatch from the beginning. Um, but we have a lot of news to still go through here. So um, let me continue here with my uh, news. Um, show you guys some flights from uh, Eastern Europe last night. So here we have more reconnaissance over Poland and Lithuania, Swedish reconnaissance plane and a British reconnaissance plane patrolling around Kaliningrad. And here we have a sub hunter, a P-8 Poseidon that was flying over uh, Northern Sweden and Northern Norway near uh, the Russian Northern fleet, keeping an eye on the Russian subs up there. That's where Russia has over half of their uh, nuclear armed subs are right over here, okay? So we're keeping an eye on them. And then here we have a P-8 Poseidon sub hunter that was patrolling Estonia, which is interesting because these planes are usually not built for uh, reconnaissance over land. And then it was also looping near uh, Kaliningrad and near Poland keeping an eye on the Baltic fleet, the Russian Baltic fleet, okay? So lots of reconnaissance going on um, in Eastern Europe still every single day. And here we have a picture showing the flight path of the Russian missiles that went to Kiev last night. And what's interesting is uh, what happened was they actually, they actually looked like they wanted to go towards Western Ukraine. And then they turned around and then went for Kiev, the capital. So they did that on purpose to try to fool the uh, Ukrainian air defense, like, oh, they're going for Western Ukraine. And then somewhere near Zydomir, they turned around and went back to Kiev. So the red lines here are the cruise missiles and the yellow ones are the, uh, I think, Iskanders or the Kinzel missiles. So pretty interesting. Um, and the, uh, Chinese, the Chinese government news company, uh, Global Times is reporting that 34 Philippine personnel have landed on the Tiexian Zhao Reef in the South China Sea on Thursday, ignoring warnings and dissuasion from the Chinese side. China Coast Guard law enforcement personnel landed on the reef to verify and address the situation in accordance with the law, according to a China Coast Guard spokesperson. So the Philippines have sent probably military personnel to this uh, reef in the South China Sea because they want to protect it because China is taking over all these reefs and they're building uh, islands that are not on their not in their territory. They're building islands in, in international waters. And what are we doing about it? Nothing at all. Okay. They're, they're literally building islands in international waters and in the uh, economic zones of other countries like the Philippines. They're literally building islands there. I mean, just imagine if we went to the Black Sea, okay, and we decided to build an island in the middle of the Black Sea, just 10 miles off the coast of Crimea. I'm sure Russia would not like that, right? Or if we decided to build an island just five miles off the shore of China, I'm sure they wouldn't like that. So, but that's what China's doing, okay? China's out of control, just like Putin is out of control. 
and none of our leaders have the balls to stand up to them, you know? So, uh, you know, pretty, pretty serious stuff. Um, UN Security Council is going to be voting tomorrow on a U.S. resolution on a Gaza ceasefire. The United States is submitting to the U.N. Security Council a draft resolution on the need for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza for a Friday vote. The U.S. resolution will unequivocally support ongoing diplomatic efforts aimed at securing an immediate ceasefire in Gaza as part of a hostage deal. We will be bringing this resolution for a vote on Friday morning. Nate Evans, spokesman for U.S. Ambassador Linda Greenfield, said in a statement. So we'll have to wait and see uh, if anything comes out of that. My guess is probably not, but, well, I guess you never know. Um, I mean, hopefully Israel uh, talked about it with them first, and they're not just doing this without Israel, but... It's possible that they are. Uh, the Biden administration is under extreme pressure by some of the hardcore liberals to, uh, you know, create a, a, a ceasefire deal. So, you know, the election is coming up and, and Biden wants to, you know, uh, show that he's pro, pro Gaza, essentially. So, um so that's what's going on with that. Um, here we have a crater from the uh, missile strike last night in Ukraine. Massive missile strike here. Just completely destroyed the entire intersection here. Look at that crater. It's just massive. Absolutely insane. So, you know... It's not looking too good for Ukraine right now. We have to keep them in our prayers, keep the Ukrainian people in our prayers um, so that they uh, they don't have these missiles landing on their cities all the time. And, you know, why would Russia strike this target? I mean, there's is there any military here? Are, are there military in the downtown of Kiev, in the downtown districts of, of a capital city? There's no military there. This is purely just to terrorize the Ukrainian people and get them to surrender. That's all this is, you know. There's no military targets here. I mean, this is just basically, you know, a, a hit below the waist. You know, that's that's what the Russian military is is known for doing over the last 30 years. They're known for attacking cities, attacking civilian targets. They did it in Chechnya. They completely leveled Grozny. They did it in Georgia. They, uh, you know, started bombing Tbilisi. They were attacking hospitals. They bombed hospitals. Um, and now they're doing it in Ukraine. So and that's all under Putin's leadership. They did it in Syria. They did the same thing in Syria as well. They were attacking hospitals in Syria. So that's, that's what they do. You know, that's their tactic. That's how they fight wars. You know, they don't care by any means necessary. That's how they win wars. And uh, that's why it's hard for us to deal with them because they have a different mindset than we do. You know, our mindset is is a lot different. So um, apparently there was some type of a cyber attack affecting DMVs across the country uh, apparently, the, there was a technical outage for uh, DMVs nationwide today. Authorities said the outage stemmed from an issue with a database maintained by the American Association of Motor Vehicle Administrators. Um, so cyber attack on the DMVs. Also, the pharmacy systems are still down. Uh, I have a viewer that I guess works in the pharmacy industry and they told me that the pharmacies are still having issues with the uh, prescriptions. So that's still ongoing. And the Venezuelan National Assembly voted into law what seems to be a law justifying a potential move on the Essequibo region. Okay, so Essequibo is this oil rich part of uh, Guyana Guyana's right next to Venezuela, and 
Uh, Venezuela has been claiming that Essequibo is their territory because uh, it historically was their territory, uh, you know, up until like 100 years ago. And the British took it or something like that. And so they're, they now claim that that's their territory. And so the Venezuelan Assembly, the Venezuelan Parliament voted a lo- into law that uh, they could go into Essequibo and defend it. So does that mean we're going to see a war in South America? It's very possible. It's very possible, but it was approved unanimously. Okay, the uh, assembly, here we have a picture of the uh, assembly in Venezuela. This is their parliament. Look, they have pictures of Hugo Chavez. Look at that. Okay, so Venezuela is a communist country, just like Cuba, a full-fledged communist country. And they passed this law saying that they could go in and take Essequibo if necessary. Okay, so that's basically like a declaration of war. So if if the president or the leader or whatever, his, he's not a president, but he's a leader, um, the dictator, if he decides to go and take Essequibo, he can, I guess. Uh, so that's pretty concerning. It's another war front that may open up soon. Um, let me see. We have some more news here. Uh, Taiwan admits that U.S. troops are now stationed on islands off the coast of China. U.S. Special Forces are now operating on the Kinmen Islands of Taiwan, which are less than six kilometers away from the Chinese city of Xiamen. Okay, so this is very serious. We now have uh, our special forces just two or three miles from China on this island that's controlled by Taiwan. Okay, the Kinmen Island. And Taiwan is now officially admitting that there are U.S. Special Forces there. And there's been a lot of incidents around that island in the past few weeks. There was an incident with the Chinese Coast Guard. They were, uh, you know, harassing some ships, some Taiwanese ships there. And somehow the coast, the Chinese Coast Guard ship sunk or something. Um, So it's a crazy situation over there in Taiwan. And last night we had the most, the most amount of, uh, Chinese warplanes and Chinese naval vessels fly towards Taiwan and around Taiwan so far this year. So uh, the most amount of sorties so far in 2024 by China around Taiwan. So um, that's pretty concerning. And uh, let's see here. Uh, apparently the Russian oil company, Luke oil is facing severe shortages of gasoline, uh, due to all the different, uh, incidents at refineries in Volgograd and Nizhny Novgorod, uh, all the different drone attacks basically have caused a severe shortage of gasoline in, uh, Luke oil. Okay, Luke Oil is like the main Russian gas company. I believe it's owned by the state, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the company is looking to import 30 to 50,000 tons of gasoline per month from Belarus. So they're going to be importing gas from Belarus because they have a shortage now. Isn't that interesting? After all those refineries were hit by the Ukrainian drones. So that's not good for Russia. And apparently the polar vortex has started spinning backwards. Earlier this month, atmospheric scientists noticed something unusual in the Arctic stratosphere. The polar vortex was spinning backwards. The vortex changed direction around March 4th, reports Dr. Amy Butler, author of NOAA's Polar Vortex blog. It was a substantial reversal reaching negative 20 meters per second a few days ago, which puts it in the top six strongest such events since 1979. 
Two weeks later, it is still spinning backwards. What's going on? Wow, so this is crazy, guys. So the polar vortex is now spinning backwards very strongly. Uh, you know, the top six strongest of such events since 1979. So that's pretty interesting. I don't know exactly what that means and what, you know, what's going to happen, but uh, it could potentially mean uh, cold air spilling out from the pole uh, and reaching us down here. Um, and today here in Pennsylvania was pretty cold. We only got up to like 30 degrees. We had snow last night. Um, it's not too unusual in March to be that cold here. We get snow all the way through April, but it's, it's interesting because it was so warm this winter, you know, like two weeks ago, we had a day where it got up to 75 degrees and all the birds were out, the bugs were out, and now it dropped back to, uh, you know, midwinter temperature. It's very interesting. Um. So something's going on, and uh, we are in a El Nino right now, and that's why the winter has been so warm is because we're in the middle of an El Nino, but that El Nino is not going to last forever, um, you know. So You know, the El, Ni or the El Nino is not going to last and we're going to go into a La Nina starting this summer and then going into the fall. So if we go back into a La Nina, next winter is going to be very strong and we could have a strong hurricane season. Uh, Pamela, thank you for the donation, Pamela. I appreciate that and thanks for all your support. Quantizzle Preps says, good work, Greg. Every bit of prep info is gold. Thank you, Quantizzle. I appreciate that. Chris RV, thank you for gifting 10 more memberships. Wow, it's very nice of you. Thank you so much. Hope you're having a good Thursday evening and hope you have a great weekend. Um, thank you very, very much. So... Um, So let me continue going through some of these headlines. We're almost done with these headlines here. Um, the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, is saying that Ukraine may soon collapse. He reportedly said that at a closed meeting in the LSA Palace. Wow, that's insane, guys. Okay, that's insane. So Emmanuel Macron saying Ukraine may soon collapse. OK, so uh, now we know why he's uh, talking about sending troops there, because he has some information that Ukrainian front lines are about to collapse. So that's very concerning. Um, and we have Russian sources saying that NATO has sent huge numbers of troops to the Cherkasy region in Ukraine, where apparently they're hiding in the ground floors and basements of schools while education continues on the upper floors. So I don't know if that's true or not. We have to take that with a grain of salt. And uh, we had the uh, French, uh, the general of, France's armed forces, General Thierry Burkard, made some interesting statements today. He said, Russian President Vladimir Putin needs to understand that Western support for Ukraine could extend to troops on the ground. The chief of France's armed forces, General Thierry Burkard, said on March 21st, as reported by AFP News, Putin has built his operation on the idea that the West will never go into Ukraine, but will simply supply arms, Burkhardt said. We have to show him that he will not be able to use this logic to go all the way because this idea is not right. The war in Ukraine concerns us because we are involved in its consequences. Europeans must therefore be capable of taking risks to ensure the security of Europe in the decade to come. So strong words there. He said. 
Uh, Europeans must be capable of taking risks to ensure the security of Europe in the decade to come. So what risks is he, ta is he talking about? He's talking about sending troops to Ukraine. And he says, Putin has built his operation on the idea that the West will never go into Ukraine, but will simply supply arms. And he's right. You know, he's right. That's why Russia is not afraid. And that's why they're doing what they're doing, you know. So. New York Adventure says that's definitely likely. We can see many hurricanes this year in a very cold winter. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If we if we go into a La Nina, then definitely uh, we'll see that. You know, if we go back into a La Nina, we'll see a very active hurricane season and a stronger winter for the northern hemisphere. So, um, let's see what else here. Uh, Polish Foreign Minister Radek Sikorsky said that there are already troops in Ukraine from major Western countries, and it's a secret that everybody knows. So uh, basically a secret amongst the uh, NATO allies saying that they've already had troops in Ukraine for a while. Uh, Polish President Andrzej Duda said Monday that NATO must urgently increase its defense spending to ensure it does not become the next target of a Russian attack. Citing unspecified German research, Duda said new evidence suggested that Russian President Vladimir Putin is doubling down on his shift towards a war economy with a view to attacking NATO in 2026 or 2027, which I think is going to be much sooner than that. Like I said, probably this year. Um, the U.S. Air Force confirmed that they conducted its final end to end test launch of the AGM-183 hypersonic missile. So the U.S. now has an air-launched hypersonic missile, the AGM-183. It has been fully tested, and it is now, uh, I guess, being deployed. Um, and uh, the U.S. A U.S. admiral warned that all indications point to uh, China invading Taiwan by 2027. So maybe we'll read a little bit about that. This is coming from uh, the Business Insider. U.S. Admiral John Aquilano said China's military is building up at a rate not seen since World War II. That puts it on a path to meeting its goal of being ready to invade Taiwan by 2027, he said. Aquilano, the outgoing head of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, urged Washington to accelerate military development. So uh, pretty crazy. We also had the uh, general of the French army. French land forces are ready to respond to any threat and are prepared for even the toughest engagement. Their commander said in remarks published Tuesday, the statement from ground army chief of staff, General Pierre Schill comes after President Emmanuel Macron said, he would not rule out dispatching ground troops to help fight you fight Russia and Ukraine. The French army is ready, Schill wrote in an op-ed piece in French daily Le Monde. However, the international situation may evolve. French people can be certain that their soldiers stand ready to respond, he said. Schill said a display of French military capabilities would help to deter any attack on France to protect itself from an attack and to defend its interests, the French army is prepared for even the toughest engagements, he said. Wow. Schill said that France could engage a division of 20,000 troops in a coalition within 30 days and could itself command an army of 60,000 soldiers by joining other allied nations. So pretty strong words there from the uh, general of the French army saying that French land forces are ready to respond to any threat and are prepared for even the toughest engagements. Okay, um, so looks like France is getting ready for war with Russia. That's what it looks like to me. So... Um, 
how's my sound? Is my sound still good? Let me know if my sound is still good. Hopefully you guys can still hear me without any uh, big interruptions. Sounds great. Okay, sounds good. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you for letting me know. Um, so yeah, things are really getting crazy. Um, we have uh, apparently Russian, Russian jets in the air right now. Russian bombers uh, about to attack Ukraine. So um, it looks like another big missile attack tonight. Uh, we also had um, the uh, Neuralink. I wanted to talk to you guys about the Neuralink. Uh, very creepy stuff here. Uh, so I'm not sure if you're aware of what Neuralink is. But it's basically um, a man-to-machine link that Elon Musk has created. and. Uh, you know, it's it's basically like something out of a science fiction movie. Um, you know, essentially they implant wires into your brain, and what what happens is you can then control uh, machines with your brain. And so they they have the first Neuralink patient here. Apparently, he received the implant in January into his brain. He's a quadriplegic, so. He can't move his arms. He can't move his legs. He had a diving accident and severed his spinal cord. Um, and so his arms don't work. His legs don't work. And he uses the Neuralink to be able to function. Um, and he's able to basically use computers now with his mind. Okay. So he, he's able to interface with computers. I mean, this is like something out of a movie, guys. This is like something out of Terminator. I mean, they're they're literally going to be building cyborgs soon. If they haven't started building cyborgs already, we're going to start having Terminators running around, uh, you know, going after John Connor. Um, you know, the technology is there. Odessa is reporting explosions. Okay, uh, so a lot of kabooms in uh, in Ukraine. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, it's there's no way for me to really cover what's going on there because, you know, Ukraine doesn't, it's illegal in Ukraine to share information about these, these locations where the, where the strikes occur. So you, that's why we don't see like videos, you know, that much of all the strikes and stuff that, you know, we used to see. So it's hard to really know what's going on now uh, with these strikes, but it all indications point to another big strike tonight. Um, but let's watch this video about Neuralink. This is absolutely insane. I want you, I want you guys to, to watch this because this is uh, historic. Okay. Uh, this is like Mark of the Beast technology there. I mean, this is like something out of a, a movie. Okay. Um, I mean, these, these people can now literally, interf you know, you can literally control your computer just by thinking, I mean, just, just think how crazy that is. Okay. So um, let's just watch this and you guys can make up your own mind. I know there's a lot of people out there that just absolutely love Elon Musk and they think he's a champion for conservatism and Christianity, uh, which couldn't be further from the truth if he's building this type of technology, you know, basically playing God. This type of technology, you know, basically playing God. Uh, it looks like... Let me see here. Hold on. Hold on. We got some issues with this link it's stuck. I got to refresh it. Hold on. Got to refresh.
All right, so here we go. Let's watch this. This is uh, about the Neuralink, and it's going to show how this guy is literally controlling a computer with his mind. All right, we should be streaming live here. Hello, world. How's it going out there? My name is uh, Bliss, and I'm an engineer at Neuralink. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to the first ever user of the Neuralink device. And I think you're my only telekinetic friend that I have. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, not many more of those out there. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name's Nolan Arbaugh. I'm 29 years old. Um, about eight years ago, I was in kind of a freak diving accident and uh, dislocated my C4-C5. So I'm a complete... Um, quadriplegic uh, so I'm paralyzed from yeah but the technology it's not about helping quadriplegics okay it sounds good on paper oh yeah we're making this technology to help quadriplegics but that's not why Elon Musk is making this he's making this because he sees that this is another uh, way for him to make more money and uh you know, it's not all it's they're not doing this to help quadriplegics. OK, this is for other stuff, nefarious stuff from below the shoulders. I have no sensation or movement uh, below my level of injury. So below my shoulders. Yeah, that, that about covers it, right? Do I need to do some of your dogs here? Let me right. Exactly. They have they have mind reading technology. They can now literally read your mind. They have the technology to read your mind, guys. OK. Um, I mean, there's just no limits to what they can do with this now. They can create cyborgs. They can uh, upload your entire conscious onto a computer. And, you know, I mean, it's just insane. Okay. So, yeah, it's not about, oh, we're helping the quadriplegics. That's what they're showing you. So you think, oh, yeah, look at this technology. It's awesome. Look what they're doing. They're such humanitarians. They're helping quadriplegics. No, that's not what it's about. First ever user of the Neuralink device. And I think you're my only telekinetic friend that I have. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, not many more of those out there. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name's Nolan Arbaugh. I'm 29 years old. Um, about eight years ago, I was in kind of a freak diving accident and uh, dislocated my C4-C5. So I'm a complete... Um, quadriplegic, uh, so I'm paralyzed from below the shoulders. I have no sensation or movement uh, below my level of injury, so below my shoulders. Yeah, that, that about covers it, right? Do I need to do some of your dogs here? Let me flip yeah, the camera absolutely. so you guys can see. Oh. Yeah, dogs all over the place. Yeah, that's Montana. The one walking by is Grace. Gracie! <laughs> Gracie, come here. Hi, Grace. How's it going, Gracie? Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is what people did. <laughs> yeah, they just here for the dogs. All right, yeah, so um, while he's been introducing himself, um, let me just flip the camera on so you can see what uh, Nolan's been doing. Yeah. Let me come over here. Do you want to explain a little bit what's going on here? Yeah, so um, I love playing chess, and so this is one of the things that y'all have enabled me to do, something that I wasn't able to really do much the last few years, especially not like this. Um, I had to use like a mouse stick and stuff, but now it's all uh, it's all being done with my brain. If y'all can see the cursor moving around the screen, that's that's all me, y'all. Um, it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Actually, can you pause the song just for the yeah, audio absolutely. coming through? And that was also done with your brain. Yep. So he just sh so he just literally uh, shut. Oh man, it looks like what happened. I lost I lost the link here. Uh, he just literally shut off the audio. He just shut off the audio with his brain. Okay. I mean, that is, that is just crazy guys. That is just, you know, it's like something out of a movie. Um, it's just unbelievable. Sorry about that. I, I just accidentally closed, closed the, uh, tab. Um, Hold on, let me get it back. Let me get that back for you.
All right, let's uh, restart again. Let's see, where were we? Somewhere over here. Oh, man, it looks like the link is screwed up again. Hold on. It's tough to uh, get this stuff working with uh, Twitter sometimes. Their, their videos just get messed up. Uh, looks like there's no audio. Hold on. What's going on here? Hold on. Sorry about that, guys. I had to use like a mouth stick and stuff, but now it's all uh, it's all being done with my brain. If y'all can see the cursor moving around the screen, that's that's all me, y'all. Um, it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> As you can um, I had to use like a mouth stick and stuff, but now it's all uh, it's all being done with my brain. If y'all can see the cursor moving around the screen, that's that's all me, y'all. Um, it's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> <laughs> As you can you pause the song just for the yeah, audio absolutely. coming through. And that was also done with your brain? Yep. It's, <laughs> it's all brain power up there. <laughs> Can you explain a little bit just to people who maybe don't have any context on this field or what's going on here? Yeah. How are you able to actually move the cursor? Yeah, so we started out with a few, trying out a few different things. Um, we basically went from what we call kind of differentiating, like imagined movement versus um, attempted movement. So a lot of what we started out with was attempting to move. So I would attempt to move, say, my right hand, left, right, forward, back. to, move. And um, from there, I think it just became intuitive for me to start imagining the cursor moving. Um, basically, it was like uh, using the force on a <laughs> cursor and I could get it to move wherever I wanted. Just stare somewhere in the screen and it would move where I wanted it to. Um, which was such a wild experience. This guy wants to know if happened. you feel like a wizard. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy. It really is. Um, it's so cool. I'm so freaking lucky to be a part of this and stuff. I mean, I just, every day it seems like we're new, learning new stuff and uh, I just can't even describe how, how cool it is to be able to do this. Do you want to um, briefly talk about a little bit um, I guess, what have you been using this for outside of these sort of research sessions or when you're just playing chess? What are some other things you've been getting value from this from? Yeah, so um, one of the first times y'all gave me complete control over this, I actually stayed up until, geez, I don't know, like 6 a.m. playing <laughs> Civilization VI. Um, it, was, it was worth it, I guess is the best way to put it. It was awesome. I, I had basically given up on playing that game just because of how, mm, I mean, it's a big game and the amount of time that it takes to sit in on it is, it's just a lot. And I have to worry about a lot of things, getting pressure sores and things like that. So I just wasn't really able to play it as much as I wanted to. And y'all gave me the ability to do that again. And I played it for, geez, like eight hours that day. Um, <laughs> so I do that. I it was like what, sometimes. 6 p.m. to like 2 a.m. Yeah, or something. It was, like, it was a lot. It was I'm giving you all my bad habits, man. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, yeah, it was awesome. So I did that. I read. I like learning languages. I'm learning like Japanese right now. I'm learning a bit of French. Um, 
maybe for, for the audience who isn't super familiar with um, mm -hmm. assistive technology, why couldn't you play Civ before? What was tricky about that or what, what was it about Neuralink that made that possible for you? Yeah, so one of the big things, honestly, was that um, the, was, oh, I think I just got checkmated. Um, um, the only way I could play it was through uh, pad and that didn't allow me to play online at all. So that kind of sucked to begin with. Um, but uh, I... Hmm. Would you play that like at 2 a.m. before? Or what was the Oh no, there was no way. There was no way for me to do that. Um, because when I'm sitting up playing on say like my iPad or something, I need complete help from say my like parents or something to do it. Um, and uh, I just didn't have that capability um, to like keep them up all night. Uh, that's just not something I would ever want to do. So basically, I would have to go down and everyone went to bed in my house, my brother, my parents, something like that. And then on top of that, um, I can only play for a few hours at a time because, you know, I have to worry about pressure sores and stuff. I have to be readjusted. I have to do weight shifts, things like that. Just things that coming that things that come with being a quadriplegic and stuff. So um, it just wasn't really feasible for me to like say play a full game or anything. And now I can literally just lie in bed and play to my heart's content. Honestly, the biggest restriction at this point was like having to wait for the, like, well, wait for the implant to charge once I used all of it. <laughs> so play for eight hours, have to get off and let it charge for a while and then hopefully be able to play some more. Um, but it's been awesome. It's been so cool. And I'm kicking ass too. So in this chess nice. game too. Yeah, right. That's what you got to think about is uh, if they hack, you know, they hack into your brain or something. I mean, there's so many things that could go wrong with this. Yeah, well, I don't know if I'm going to win this chess game, but we'll see. <laughs> um, and then maybe just one final question. Your mom was showing me a bunch of, um, of pictures of you in different Halloween costumes over the years. It's something that yeah. you go nuts on. So now that you have like actual, you know, force control over stuff, I, I guess that opens up the possibility space there a bit. What are you thinking to dress up as this year? Mm, I mean, something my <laughs> friends and I have been wanting to do for a while. Uh, I think I'm going to be Professor X. I think that's pretty, pretty fitting. Um, not only because he's in a wheelchair, and I think that just obviously fits perfectly, but now I'm actually a telekinetic, basically. Um, yeah, and so it's it's going to be cool. It's going to be real cool. My friends and I are really excited You're gonna about it. You're going to freak people out when you play trick or treat. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Um, okay, I think that's uh, that's it for today. Anything else yeah. you wanted to add before uh, signing off? Mm. We got more work to do. A lot to learn about the brain here. Yeah, I mean, it's not perfect. I would say that they, we have run into some issues. I don't want people to think that it is, like, this is the end of the journey. There's still a lot of work to be done. Um, but it has already changed my life. And I think that people who are thinking about saying applying for the human trials or are thinking about, you know, finding some way to, um, help out with this, um, to. Yeah. That's a good point about the uh, EMP. Yeah. Well, what, what would happen if there was an EMP? Would it, uh, send electricity into your brain? Um, so, you know, it's just absolutely crazy guys. Uh, it's like something out of a movie. Um, so I wanted to share that with you, but that's all the breaking news that I have for today. Um, what I wanted to do is show you guys some of these bases in Belarus that I was looking at today with, uh, Lee Wheelbarger and he's got some, uh, new satellite, uh, footage um and his satellite footage is showing a lot of activity at these bases in belarus so uh i want to just show you guys some of these areas here um let me see if i can if i can do that uh let me see here So, I mean, there's like multiple new, there's multiple bases near Poland in Belarus, and there's been a lot of activity at them uh, recently. So here we have Poland and Belarus. And uh, 
Let me just show you guys some of these areas. So the areas that he was showing me, and he's going to go, he's going into detail on it on his channel, but I'll just show you guys quickly. There's one area here, uh, one base here near Prujane. And this is just like 10 miles away from the uh, Polish border. And uh, we went into detail looking at this earlier today. There's numerous underground bunkers. Here's one underground bunker. Check that out. Okay, you see that? And there's actually fencing around it or a wall you can see right around it. Um, this is literally like 10 miles from the border of Poland. 13 bombers in the air. Wow, Ross, thanks for sharing. Um, thank you, Ross. Appreciate it. So, uh, you know, this is literally just a few miles, 10, 15 miles from the Polish border. Here's the Polish border right here. And there's this airfield right there, an old airfield, which Lee is saying it's actually 21 miles, but Lee says that this airfield has been redone. He's got recent satellite footage, and he's saying that this airfield has a ton of uh, missiles everywhere and uh, helicopters, um, just 21 miles from the Polish border. And there's actually a highway right here that goes right into Poland. Okay, so they could jump on this highway and go straight to Poland there. Um, then there's another one over here literally just a few more miles away from this one then there's another one okay here's the other one right here and uh you know lee has footage showing a bunch of missiles and helicopters and everything over here um and if you want to see that you got to go on his rumble channel he's probably talking about it right now going into detail about it because he was supposed to do that about an hour ago um but he's going to do a detailed analysis on his channel. So check him out on Rumble, KLW World News, if you want to see more details. I mean, here's another site right here. Okay. You have this uh, bunker here. Okay. Look at that bunker. And there's fencing around it. There's another uh, bunker here, some kind of bunker a complex here. You can see the fencing around it in the middle of a hay field. Okay. Um, and Lee was saying that there were actually missiles laying on the ground in recent satellite footage. This area here had missiles on the ground, like they were going to load them into the S 400s, I guess. And he was saying that they have S 400s erected in launch tubes, uh, in this area. Okay. So, um, you know, and that's another 10 miles or so from the Polish border another 20 miles, so 42 miles. So you have these two bases right here, um, you know, right next to Poland, okay? Um, and they have, you know, all kinds of equipment there, tanks, artillery, helicopters, S-400s, um, just craziness. And then there was another one uh, he showed me, can't remember where it was, but, uh, I mean, that's that's very alarming right there, okay? That's very, very alarming. Um, and then right here you have this training ground, literally just a mile from the Polish border in Belarus right there, this military training ground. Um, so pretty serious stuff going on. What's going on, God's soldiers? Jesus is coming soon. I think he is too. Good to see you. Thanks for showing up. I hope you're doing well. Um, how likely is a nuclear war during the winter? I think it's very possible. I mean, if... If they wanted to really hurt us, the best time to do that would be in the winter. So we would have starvation issues and people would freeze and stuff like that. So uh, let me see if I could find that other 
let me see if I could find that other site that that uh, Lee was showing me uh, today. Hold on, find it. Uh, oh yeah, and then there was this site right here, right outside of Minsk. He showed me this site right here, which looks to be some kind of uh, missile facility. This is crazy, guys. Look at this. This is right outside of Minsk in Belarus, capital city of Belarus, just about 10 or 15 miles to the east of Minsk. There's this uh, facility in the middle of the woods, looks like for launching ice scanners or maybe S-400s. There's this uh, uh, pad here. I don't know if that's like a helipad or something. But what you can actually see is if you look closely, there's like bunkers here. Um, and there's actually a security gate right here and a fence. And then if you go down through the woods, you'll see there's a bunch of these uh, facilities here, which are garages for uh, holding the, for storing the ice scanners, ice scanner missile for missile launchers. Okay, these buildings right here in the woods. That's where they have their um, ice scander missiles and uh, they can pull out into the open and launch them and then go back into the woods. But uh, there's a lot of, a lot of activity in Belarus. It's a crazy situation. They're really uh, getting ready for war. Um, so uh, let's just see what's going on right now over uh, the U.S. We still have some nuclear warplanes in the air. Uh, we have one doing loops over Iowa right now. Check that out. Kokeef 25 doing loops over southern Iowa. So he's definitely transmitting uh, emergency action messages here for sure. If they're doing tight loops like that, that means they're transmitting uh, EAMs. So I'm sure the EAMs are going off right now. Uh, it appears that the nuke sniffer landed already. Looks like the nuke sniffer landed. I don't see it, the uh, nuke sniffer anywhere. It looks like it just landed. Um, and uh, let's see how many E6s are left. Let me see how many E6s do we have in the air. Um, and then uh, let's see what's going on over here in Europe. Oh, yeah. So we have a U.S. Air Force reconnaissance plane heading towards uh, Poland. So that. It's definitely a sign that there's a uh, missile strike. Um, wow, this plane is interesting. Look at this. It's flying over Belarus. It took off from London, and it's going right to Russia. That's pretty interesting, and it doesn't have any call sign or any information on it. I wonder what that is. Maybe some kind of uh, VIP plane. I don't know, but uh, here you can see Hobo 17. It's going to set up over southeastern Poland and start looping soon to keep an eye on the uh, Russian uh, missiles heading into Kiev. Um, um, what's going on, John Hoover? What they didn't show with the Neuralink guy is that is what happens when someone uses the garage door opener. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, they can perfect it. I mean, this is just the initial initial stages. That They're definitely going to perfect it. They're definitely going to militarize it for sure. I mean, just look, they're able to do this with a civilian. You know the military industrial complex is going to want to somehow figure out a way to use Neuralink for, you know, weapons you know, uh, you know, I don't know how they would do it, but, you know, maybe they could control planes with their mind or something, or they could make cyborgs. I don't know, but they're definitely the military industrial complex is salivating over Neuralink, I'm sure. Uh, John Hoover says, I'm John Hoover, and I approve the flight path of Hoover 29. That's funny. The Bible describes nuclear winter. Coastal regions will be affected when Gog invades Israel. Yeah, and you know who Gog is? Gog is the leader of Russia. So, 
That's coming out of the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38 and 39. Uh, what happened with Lynn? Something happened with Lynn. Uh, not sure what happened there, but uh, Lynn Dunn, Lynn Dunn is, a, is a friend of the channel. So I hope you guys didn't ban her. <laughs> that would be bad. Uh, Lynn Dunn is a friend of the channel. She's a friend of mine. So, um, yeah, I see Lynn Dunn says was unhidden by K. Paul. Yeah, uh, yeah, please don't don't ban her. She's a friend of mine, so please don't do that. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, as far as like for the mods go, just, you know, you don't don't ban someone unless you know, you absolutely have to, you know, don't, don't go heavy handed with the banning, you know, just time people out unless someone's clearly, you know, repeating the same problem over and over, then, you know, ban them, but it's, you should give them several options first, you know, at least three strikes, you know, um, so she disrespected you. I'm sorry that I'm sorry to hear that. I, I don't understand why, because she's always been very, uh, very um, friendly. So I don't know what that was about. But uh... right, yeah, you you have to right. Banning should be a last resort. Um... So yeah, we got this plane up over uh, Poland right now. Um, and it's going to keep an eye on the missiles coming in. Yeah, we got two two E sixes up in the air now. Still, yep, we got two E sixes up. Two nuclear warplanes are still in the air right now. So, uh, you know, our military is definitely on high alert, especially for this late at night. It's already ten p.m. to have uh, ten uh, to have two nuclear warplanes in the air at ten p.m. is definitely uh, pretty unusual. Um, So I don't know if I'm going to be able to unban her now because it's difficult to unban people on YouTube. Once you ban them, it's not easy because uh, they they don't have an easy way of unbanning people. So um, so yeah, don't ban people unless it's the the last last resort. You know that you can always time people out even. You can time people out up to 24 hours. They have an option now. You can time people out up to 24 hours. So um, you could always do that. And then ban because once you ban someone, it's hard for me to unban them unless I unban everybody because I have a ban list of like 600 people or more. My ban list is insane. I've been on YouTube like six years now. So uh, my ban list is huge and I would have to go through 700 people and try to find that person and unban them. Um, Mud and Munitions says 2024 is a year for the books and only in the first three months. God help us all. Right. Yeah. It's only the first three months. That's right. It's only going to get worse and worse. What's going on, Bradley Moore? Uh, the new Madrid going off on the eclipse. Uh, well, I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, that's just speculation. So uh, I don't know if the new Madrid is going to go off during the eclipse. It's it's possible, of course, but I, I don't I can't say that that's a fact. Um, but we are overdue for an, uh, a new Madrid, you know, um, situation. OK, new Madrid is is. Uh, you know, bound to happen soon. Um, 
scientists are saying that there's like at least a 30% chance of New Madrid going off in the next 50 years or something like that. So yeah, New Madrid, something we got to watch. But uh, as far as it going off during the solar eclipse, I'm not sure about that. Uh, Laura Miller says, hey, Greg, tuning in from Curatuck, North Carolina. Good to hang out with you again. Thanks for all the info. Worrisome times. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Eric Johnson says, we felt the New Madrid shake here in Indiana. Oh, wow. Um, so let me... Uh, let me just see if there are any recent quakes in the New Madrid now that you're mentioning it. Let's see if there's any uh, recent quakes there. Um, nothing really to report recently. Um, unless they're hiding. Unless they're hiding it. Um, so yeah, there is a missile attack underway right now in... Uh, Ukraine. I'm going to try to get some more details on that in a second here. Um, I just want to check these uh, quakes out here. Looks like there was a 3.5 magnitude earthquake in uh, Missouri um, last week on the 15th. That's pretty strong near uh, Kansas. I don't know if that's the result of mining. Um, could have been from mining possibly, or maybe not. I don't know. More, uh, quakes near Oklahoma city. Looks like Edmond, Oklahoma. There were some, uh, quakes looks like two days ago at 2.9, just North of, uh, Oklahoma city. Wow. That's pretty interesting. Check that out. I don't know if anybody in the area lives in Oklahoma city, but there were uh, two quakes just uh, north of Oklahoma City, 2.6. Wow, several several quakes. And then there were some, uh, let's see. And there were some in southern Oklahoma down here. I don't know if that's from fracking. There was a 2.5 in southern Oklahoma, 3.1, 2.5. Interesting. Maybe it's from fracking. I don't know. I don't know if they do a lot of fracking there or not, but, um, you know, there was a quake near Kansas City. Look, 3.5 near Kansas City last week. Um, and there's been a lot of quakes in Idaho lately, too. A lot of quakes here, central Idaho, a lot of quakes here. There was a two point, looks like a 2.7 uh, today actually here. Interesting. Near the Salmon River Mountains. Interesting. Um. Carol says, wow, YouTube has it in for you. They are not putting your videos in my feeds, and now they removed my channel your, my channel from your subscriptions. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, they do stuff like that. So, yeah, don't rely on uh, the, your feed and don't rely on your home screen because also it goes by the algorithm and how many of my videos you watch, whether it's you're going to see it again or not. Uh, what other videos you watch. If let's say you watch other videos on a different topic that are not related to my channel, like let's say you watch a lot of videos about cars, then they're going to start promoting car videos anytime you log into your YouTube. Okay. So it depends on what you're watching. Um, so that could be part of it, but yeah, they do all kinds of different things. So uh, the best thing to do is to look me up and just check once a day, you know, and see if I posted, 
I mean, I always do at least one video a day. Usually I do two. Uh, on the weekends, I do less. But during the week, you know, I always do at least one or two updates a day, sometimes more. Um, so if you haven't been notified or you haven't seen anything from me for a while, just go to my web, go to my uh, channel and just manually check it. And, um, you know, just put the at symbol in front of NY Prepper and it'll pull my channel right up. Um, but like earlier in the week, my channel was being hidden under other search results. So if like you went to YouTube and you searched in YouTube NY Prepper to try to find my channel, my channel wouldn't pull up right away. There would be like some other channels that would show up on top of mine, um, but they seem to have fixed it now because I had a chat with them. And after I had that chat, my channel showed up uh, if I searched just NY Prepper. But um, all you have to do is if you put the at symbol when you search my name, because now YouTube has these handles, you see at NY Prepper kind of like kind of like Twitter with the hashtags or no, uh, Twitter has the at symbol also. So they have that same thing like Twitter now. So you just, if you just search at NY prepper, um, it'll, sh my channel will show right up. You know, if you just type at NY prepper and it'll come right up at the top of the list. Okay. Um, and here's my last two, you see I'm live now. And then my last upload from earlier. So, uh, but yeah, it's possible, you know, people get shadow banned all the time. Um, you know, YouTube doesn't want to admit it, but they have they have a, a artificial intelligence system that scans your videos. And if let's say you, I noticed with me, if I get a couple of videos that are demonetized in a row, let's say I get like two or three videos that get demonetized in a short period of time, like in a week or back to back, then what they do is they, I noticed that they shadow ban me. So, uh, my views on subsequent videos are a little bit reduced by, by, a, you know, maybe 10%, five to 10%. And then after a couple of days, the shadow ban goes away and my views go back up again. Um, usually shadow bans only last like a short period of time, but, uh, every social media company does that, you know, they all do shadow banning. It's just, you know, that's the name of the business. That's what they do. Um, but uh, so let's check up and see what's going on with this um, missile strike in Ukraine right now. Um, this is interesting. We have a bunch of aerial refuelers in Texas here flying back to back. It's pretty interesting. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, New Madrid, somebody was annoyed by the fact that I say New Madrid, I guess the way I pronounce it bothers them. So New Madrid, 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 New Madrid. So hopefully I pronounce it better now. New Madrid, New Madrid, New Madrid. <laughs> New Madrid, 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 New Madrid. Some people are just crazy. I, I <laughs> it's funny. I just don't understand it. This person's been emailing me complaining that. Every time I say New Madrid, I'm not pronouncing it properly or something. And it's it's just like, I don't understand why that would bother someone so bad. You know, even if I was mispronouncing, which I'm not, 
I'm saying it the right way, but according to the local accent, apparently, I'm not saying it the right way. Um, but I guess this really bothered someone so bad that they've been sending me emails about it nonstop. So, um, New Madrid, New Madrid, New Madrid, Putin, 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 New Madrid, New Madrid, Putin, 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 Putin. Um, so let me just check up and see what's going on with this missile strike uh, in Ukraine right now. Um, let me see see what's going on here. Um, Old Madrid. That's funny. Old Madrid. Yeah, people used to really get upset when I would say Putin. They would say that uh, that's disrespectful because I said Putin and I didn't say Putin. That was another one, too, that really I still get people that would send me like vile hate mail or vile, nasty comments because I say Putin and I don't say Putin, which actually Putin is the right way to say it in English. If you're pronouncing it, it's actually Putin. It's not Putin. Putin is not proper English, actually. So but some people would they would just blow a gasket because I said Putin and I didn't say Putin. And quite frankly, I don't care about respecting him. You know, I really don't care. He's the last person I think about respecting. Okay, he's not my father. He's a nobody to me. He means absolute zero in my life. So uh, I can say his name however the hell I want to say it. And I can say New Madrid however I want to say it. Um, Vladimir Pooping. That's funny. Pooping. What's going on, Bailey? I love poutine. I'm a rap star. That's funny. Yeah, it's just it's just funny, you know. I just don't understand why people get so upset over little things like that. Um, yeah, New Madrid is very concerning. Yep, New Madrid is very, very concerning. Um, yeah, it's just funny. Um, so let me see what's going on here. Uh, we got missile strikes in Ukraine. Um, let me see here. Let's just check up on Ukraine. Uh, you know, the thing is, is right now a lot of people have war fatigue. A lot of people are, are burned out with all this war, war talk all the time. And I even notice a lot less people watch me than like a few months ago. And I think people are just burned out with all the wars, but that's that it's not going to go away. Uh, you know, just because we're tired of it doesn't mean it's going to go away. So a lot of people are going to be caught off guard when the next big war starts because people are so fatigued with all these wars that, you know, they just don't even want to hear about wars anymore at all. And then that's that's going to catch people by surprise when the next war kicks off. Um, so let me just uh, check here and see what's going on in Ukraine with this uh, missile strike. So we're hearing 14. Wow. Wow. 14 uh, Russian strategic bombers are in the air and four Tu-22s. So it looks like 18 bombers are in the air uh, we're hearing that uh, ballistic missiles from Crimea are hitting Zaporizhia right now. Wow. 18 Russian bombers are in the air is what I'm hearing. 18. 18 Russian bombers. Uh, we can confirm at least uh, 13 
Tu-95s. Six took off from Alenia Base, which is near Finland, and then seven took off from Angles, which is like South Central Russia near Stalingrad. Um, wow. So looks like there's going to be a massive missile strike tonight, probably in the next couple hours. Uh, so very concerning. Um, very, very concerning. Um, so yeah, lots of, uh, bombers in the air, lots of bombers in the air. What's going on, Vanessa Dubois? Real estate photography, photography says, seriously, God forbid you disrespect that monster. Well, yeah, for a lot of people, P Putin or Putin is a hero. They see him as a hero. So, you know, if you disrespect Putin, it's like, you know, it's like the end of the world for them. God's soldier says, I, I had an email that I pronounced biblical names better or I'm an idiot. Wow, that's really nasty that somebody would say that to you. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. That's yeah, people are just. People are just nasty these days. You know, they think that because you're on the internet that they can just say whatever you, whatever they want because you're a public figure and that you're, you know, you're, they're allowed to just insult you. And, you know, it's people know that there's no, there's no consequences. That's the problem is that, I mean, think about it this way, you know, half of these people, most of them uh, would probably not say the things they say on the internet to people in real life because they know that there would be consequences for it. They, they would end up getting punched in the face probably like all these trolls that say all these nasty things. They wouldn't dare say that to their, to their boss or somebody on the street. So they go on the computer, you know, and they hide behind their computer and they say all these vile things because they know there's no consequence for it, you know? They can just say whatever they want. So. Yeah, exactly. They would get they would get slapped. Yep, exactly. That's right. Uh, salty biscuit. How's it going? Thanks for the donation. I'm curious where hobo is going. Strato caster tankers fighters. We will see also China broke another record in the DZ. Yes. Yes. China. I talked about that. Thank you. Uh, yeah. China sent, uh, uh, like 32 airplanes today or last night into, uh, the, uh, Taiwan Strait and around Taiwan, the most in 2024 so far. Um, and yeah, Hobo is going towards southeastern Poland to keep an eye on the uh, Russian missiles that are inbound. So... So we got like almost 20 bombers in the air, Russian bombers getting ready to launch on Ukraine. Um, wow. So this is going to be huge, guys. This is going to be a huge attack, just like last night. Um, 
We also have breaking news coming out of uh, Serbia. This is something that uh, I haven't talked about yet, but the uh, president of Serbia is saying that they're just waiting for the best opportunity to invade uh, Kosovo. Here we have a tweet from uh, Albin Kurdi. He's the uh, prime minister of Kosovo. He said, days ago, Serbia's president issued an open threat that they are waiting for the best possible opportunity to invade. Today, Serbian army units have been detected just meters away from our border. We are closely monitoring the situation for any attempt to cross into Kosovo territory. And then he releases this video here uh, showing what appears to be a Serbian army soldier walking to within just a few miles of the uh, border of Serb of Kosovo, okay. So very concerning, very very concerning. Um, what are my thoughts about veterans being homeless versus Ukraine getting so much money? Um, yeah, I think I think we should balance it out. I've said that before. Uh, we shouldn't completely abandon Ukraine because it's in our interest that Ukraine wins. The war, but we should be smarter with how we spend our money um, and what we give to them. Um, and as far as I know, we're not actually sending a lot of money. Well, we are, but uh, like when they announce like one of those aid packages, they're just announcing how much the aid package is worth. They're not announced. Okay, so like if they say we're going to be giving ten billion dollars of aid. To Ukraine, that doesn't mean that they're giving them ten billion dollars. They're giving them ten billion dollars worth of aid in the form of tanks or artillery or something like that. So yeah, we've given them fifty billion dollars in aid, but that's not like fifty billion dollars in cash. That's just what the aid is worth. So it's not all just money we're giving them. But uh, I agree, we have to balance it out better. Um, but it's in our interest to make sure that Ukraine wins because Ukraine is, uh, first of all, by treaty, we're bound by treaty to protect them. OK, that was in the 90s, the Budapest Memorandum. You can look it up for yourself. We signed a treaty with Ukraine and Russia, and the treaty was that Ukraine would give up their nuclear weapons if Russia agreed not to attack them and invade them. And the U.S. was the guarantor of that. OK, and so what happened is Ukraine gave up their nuclear weapons. This was all Bill Clinton and uh, uh, Yeltsin. It was under Bill Clinton and Yeltsin. This was all Bill Clinton's idea. OK, and so. Ukraine gave up their nuclear weapons, and in return, Russia was supposed to not invade them. Well, sure enough, they did. And so now, because we signed that treaty, you know, we're bound by the treaty to, uh, or, you know, agreement, whatever, uh, you know, we're bound, we're bound by that to help Ukraine. It's not, it's not a charity. It's a, we have to do it. And it's not about charity and, and, you know, it's it's about protecting our interest. Uh, it, it's in our interest to make sure that Russia doesn't take over all of Ukraine. OK, that would be a disaster. And if they did that, their next target would be Europe. It's not a it's not even a question. They would definitely go after Europe. That would be their next target. Just like when Hitler took over Poland, he didn't stop at Poland. He kept going. He attacked France. He attacked the UK, he attacked Norway. And then before you know it, he took over all of Europe. And then he even went to North Africa. And then he went into Russia. Okay. So it's in our interest to protect Ukraine. Uh, does that mean that we should sacrifice our own internal security to do it? No, we have the resources to do both. It's just that our leaders don't want to do both. They don't want to enforce the border. They don't want to help the veterans because to them, that those are issues that they don't care about. But it's not like we're a poor country and we can't afford to do both. We can do both. We can support Ukraine, make sure they win, make sure that Russia doesn't go any further. And we can secure the border and we can help our veterans. We can do it all. We've done it before and we can do it again. 
Okay. It's just that our, our uh, leadership doesn't have the, you know, the willpower. They're just not interested in it. They're, they don't care, basically. There's no interest in our current government to do that. Okay. But we have the capability. There, there's, there's no need to have to choose between one or the other. Okay. We're America. We can do it all. Okay. So um, it's, it's equally important. The border, the border and uh, stability around the world is equally important because if you, you can't sacrifice one for the other, they're both equally important. So you can't sacrifice the border for European security, but you can't sacrifice European security for the border either because what happens in Europe affects us because we're part of NATO and uh, that could drag us into a war if things escalate there. And, you know, if Russia starts attacking Europe and invading European countries, which they're already doing, um, that's going to draw us in under NATO. Okay, we're bound by NATO to respond. And eventually Russia would attack us. That's their ultimate goal. You think Russia cares about Ukraine? No. You think they care so much about France or Germany? Not so much. Okay, America is the biggest challenge for Putin. And ultimately, he wants to uh, dethrone America. And he hates America. You know, uh, he sees America as an eternal enemy, essentially. Okay, and so, uh, you know, Europe is not the final destination. Europe is the stepping stone to America. Once he takes Europe, then he'll attack us with nukes, okay, in a surprise attack. So, um, you know, I think they're both equally important and we, we could do both at once. So that's my opinion and I'm not going to change it and you don't have to agree with me. You know, I'm not forcing my opinion on anybody. So you asked me what my thoughts are. Those are my thoughts. If you don't like it, that's not my problem. That's my opinion. And I'm entitled to have an opinion just like anybody else, just like you. So respect my opinion. Uh, if you can't respect it, then just leave. Um, so, uh, you know, and that doesn't mean that we, sh you know, securing the border is not hard to do. It's not hard to do. It's, it's not, it's all about just enforcing the laws that are there. We have the resources to do it. It's not hard to enforce the border and to secure it. It's not anything that's, you know, anything big that we, we're dealing with people that are just trying to cross the border on foot. Okay. We don't need crazy amount of resources to do that. It's just, it's, it's all ideological. The Biden administration is uh, ideologically driven and they're, they want these illegal aliens to enter the country. That's what they want. They want them to enter because they feel like they can get votes from them because they're already giving them, you know, uh, pathways to citizenship and driver's licenses. And now they can enlist in the military. So who do you think these people are going to vote for if Biden gives them citizenship and all this stuff, of course, they're going to vote for him, you know, and the Democrats in general. So it's all ideologically driven. Um, but I, I don't want to really talk too much about it because, uh, you know, I've said, I've said my position multiple times and I'm not going to keep saying it again. It's really, it's really aggravating, you know, to hear people constantly, uh, accuse me of, of, of things that they don't even watch my channel and they assume because I say we have to support Ukraine that I'm against the border. I'm sick of having to re explain myself constantly and I'm not going to do it again. So if you accuse me of that, you're going to get banned by my moderators. Okay. I'm not going to tolerate bullshit from anybody. So, uh, yeah, there's 18 bombers in the air right now. 18 bombers in the air. 18 bombers uh, getting ready to launch missiles on Ukraine.
18 bombers. Each one of those bombers can carry up to 10 missiles, maybe more, maybe less, but around 10 missiles each. So you're talking, you know, over 150 missiles probably that are going to be launched at Ukraine in the coming hours. Um, and yeah, I, I talked about the border in the very beginning of the stream. That was one of the first things that I talked about. So I think a lot of these people that, you know, that come into the chat and they randomly, you know, uh, interdict the, the conversation and start accusing me of, of not supporting border security because I talk about Ukraine. I think they're honestly just probably uh, Russian agents. And what they want to do is they want to basically uh, make it seem like anybody that supports Ukraine is against the border. You know, and that's the new thing now is that, oh, if you support Ukraine, then you're you're somehow against the border security, which is a bunch of BS. OK, and, you know, I'm a nice guy, but I I, I have, you know, my limits. I'm not going to let anybody disrespect me. OK, uh, I have my limits. OK. Thank you, Aldo, Aldo Schmedek. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, Bailey, is this an all-nighter? Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't thought about it yet. Uh, this particular stream, I'm not going to be able to keep it open for another hour because uh, the maximum time I can keep a stream open if I still want to edit is four hours. And what I want to do is I want to edit the stream to just the beginning of the stream where I talked about the news. Um, so I'll probably shut this one down in about an hour or so at the latest. And if anything crazy is going on, then I'll restart. I'll restart the stream. Yeah, they don't know. A lot of people don't know about the Budapest Memorandum. Yeah, it's we signed an agreement with Ukraine. So we're bound by that agreement to make sure that uh, Ukraine doesn't lose their territory. So, uh, you know, don't be mad at me. Be mad at Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton is the one that signed that agreement. Ben says, dude, you're spot on. I support you 100% of former U.S. Air Force intelligence. I also like weightlifting. Oh, wow. U.S. Air Force intelligence. That's pretty awesome. Thank you. And yeah, weightlifting is, is awesome. It's very important. Uh, yeah, maybe I should change the longer subscription. That's a good idea. That'll keep the, uh, the trolls out for sure. Um, That'll keep the trolls out. That's a good idea. Yeah, I'll check your breaking news. Um, yeah, oh, it's definitely going to be more, definitely going to be more significant than last night. It's 18 bombers versus 10. So huge difference. It's almost double the amount of bombers. There's now 18 eight, there's now 18 bombers in the air that are going to drop bombs on Ukraine. Yeah, Amy King, good point. Yep, you can support many views and not follow mainstream talking points. Maybe start researching more and stop watching mainstream news for snips of the whole story. Right. Yeah. I always laugh when people say that, oh, I'm, I'm following the mainstream media. Uh, I always laugh at that, you know, like I have time to sit around and watch all these stupid shows on CNN or Fox News. You know, like I have time if I'm putting out two videos a day, I don't have time to waste sitting on the couch, you know, watching these morons on TV telling me a bunch of lies, basically. Uh, MB Carbo 78 says another jet just passed overhead heading to my south high rate of speed 
near Shippensburg, Chambersburg area. Oh, I know where that is. Chambersburg and Shippensburg. That's where the uh, Patriot missiles are. Uh, they have the uh, Patriot missile facility there in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. That's where they build Patriot missiles. Um, we can check on the map and see that it's prob probable that those jets have their transponders off. A lot of times they fly with their transponders off. Yeah, yeah. there's nothing over Chambersburg now. But uh, Chambersburg, there's the uh, Patriot missile facility there where they build Patriot missiles. Uh, it's a Raytheon facility. It's a Letter Kenny, Letter Kenny Army Depot. Okay, Letter Kenny, that's actually a nuclear war target. That's really the only, well, actually Raven Rock is in Pennsylvania. So Pennsylvania only has two nuclear war targets, Chambersburg and Raven Rock, which are right near each other, actually. Raven Rock is a bunker right on the border with Maryland. And then you have Chambersburg not too far away. So those are the two main targets for nuclear war in Pennsylvania. Um, but uh, yeah, there's 18 bombers in the air. Um, Southern Homestead is asking me, where do I get my info? Um, that's, that's a trade secret. That's a trade secret. If I gave all my, if I gave out all my sources, you guys wouldn't watch me, would you? Because you would just go to my sources. So uh, I'm not going to give out my trade secrets. <laughs> I can't show the flight paths of the bombers. They're Russian bombers. Kat Sui, what's going on? Victory Day is big in Russia, so Mr. Pooh needs something to brag about in May. So everything can happen like false flag events at the ZNPP. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, Victory Day is coming up in May. So uh, yeah, he needs some bragging. I, I wonder if he's going to start this big operation before Victory Day or after Victory Day. But he's going to do something soon because of all the equipment that's being moved into Belarus, all the tanks and all that stuff that they're moving over there uh, into Belarus. You know, um, all the, the bases that are just within a few miles of the border. Um, you know, it's it's very suspicious. All the... Uh, the mechanized brigades and shit going close to Lithuania. All those uh, mechanized brigades and artillery regiments and S 400s, you know, all within a few miles of the border of Lithuania and, and Poland. Um, they're not doing that just for fun. And Russia, they said they're going to be building two ground armies this year with uh, 16 divisions what was that again let me see um sergey shoigu announced it yesterday let me see what did he say uh 16 brigades and 14 divisions okay russian defense minister sergey shoigu announces the creation of two new ground armies with 16 brigades and 14 divisions that's insane you know you're looking at half a million troops probably um John Hoover, thank you for the information. Kharkiv is reporting explosions now. Salt and Prepper says, USMC, I'm American. C-17 spotted in Amarillo, Texas. Um, thank you guys. By the way, I get a lot of emails from people about all the different uh, planes in their area. Thank you guys for sending all that information. I, I don't get a chance to uh, share every single, every single email, but um, I know I, I do read a lot of them. Um, and uh, thank you guys for that info on all the flights in your areas. Bailey says, reminder to take a break and drink water. Yeah, I've been actually, I was just sipping water right now. Uh, that's actually, it's funny. I was just doing that
Uh, flight radar is free. Yeah, it's just you have to pay for some of the more advanced features, but you can still use it for the most part. Um, so, uh, let's see if I can check some news here. Uh, hold on. Just checking some news. Um, see if there's any updates here. It looks like those bombers just took off. So if they just took off, that means that it's going to take them a little while to reach their launch points. And then from their launch points, then it's going to take a little while for the missiles to actually arrive. So right now in uh, Ukraine, I believe it is uh, probably early morning right now. It's probably, what, six in the morning, I think, six in the morning. So this is going to be a daytime strike. It looks like they're going to strike Ukraine uh, in the middle of the day or in the morning when people are going to work. Oh, it's actually five in the morning. Yeah, it's five in the morning. So uh, they're going to hit Ukraine right in the in the morning time. Right when everybody's going to work. Uh, uh, we have breaking news. Russian short range ballistic missiles have been launched from the Crimean Peninsula towards southern Ukraine. So they launched ballistic missiles from southern Ukraine. Uh, oh, actually, I'm wrong. It says here the missiles are expected to arrive between 4 30 and 5 a.m. local time. So that could have that's basically right now. Um, so we're officially hearing uh, 13 or 14 TU-95s, and then there were four TU-22s. So that's 18 bombers. Um, wow, we have some breaking news coming out of Belarus. Belarus has set up a NOTAM over... Southern Belarus, they've extended it to uh, June. Check this out. This is very suspicious, guys. They have a, a NOTAM for Southern Belarus along the border with Ukraine through June 30th. Um, let's see here. Uh, flight restriction zone for flights of all types of civil aircraft at altitude from zero to 19,800. 800 meters in the south of Belarus is extended according to NOTAM 00159-24 from uh, zero hours on April 1st until 2359 of June the 30th. So this NOTAM is going to start in uh, the end of the month on April 1st. Interesting. The restriction doesn't apply to aircraft of the Belarusian Air Force, the State Border Committee of Belarus, and the Ministry of Emergency Situations. So um, looks like Belarus is going to be attacking Ukraine from, from their territory if they're extending this NOTAM uh, in southern Belarus. So Melody Roberts, thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. Thanks for all you're doing for us. It's hard work and I appreciate it so much. We never would have heard anywhere else. Thank you, Melody. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, it is a lot of hard work. People don't realize it is a lot of hard work, you know, researching all this stuff. Uh, it's, it's a 24 seven job. Uh, six MiG 31 K's in the air. Minutes ago, they took off. Wow. Okay, so we got six MiG-31s in the air. We got uh, 18 bombers. Wow. So, yeah, that's that's not good. Each one of those MiG-31s can carry a Kinzel. That means that they're going to be sending uh, Kinzel missiles. The Kinzels are on the MiG-31s. Uh, 
So they're going to be sending six Kinzel missiles, and then the bombers are going to have the cruise missiles on them. So we're, we're talking probably well over 100 missiles being launched at Ukraine tonight, right now, any minute. Um, Rodney Middleton says, so those troops and tanks up near Lithuania must have been a decoy for the snow tam. Uh, yeah, very possible. That's a good, good point. That's very possible. Yeah. That's it. That, well, that's what I think they're going to do. I think that, um, they want, they want NATO to focus on Lithuania and Poland. So they're going to mass their forces there. And then meanwhile, they're going to attack Ukraine from somewhere else, or they're going to basically help Russia by pinning down the NATO forces in the Baltics and in Poland. Then Russia is going to have more uh, freedom to attack Ukraine because NATO forces are going to be focused on the threat from Belarus. So they're going to open up that front. And then I think Serbia... Serbia is going to do it all. Serbia is going to attack Kosovo. Uh, the Serbian president said a couple of days ago that uh, he's just waiting for the right opportunity to invade Kosovo. And there's already Serbian troops that are on the border uh, with uh, Kosovo right now as we speak. Okay, so it could all pop off at the same time. Um, it could all pop off at the same time. Belarus attacking Lithuania and Poland, and then, you know, some incursions. I don't think it's going to be like a full-scale attack on Lithuania right away. I think they may just cross the border a couple of miles and then sit there and occupy that territory, and that will force NATO to respond and focus on that. And then all the shock and the, the chaos of that will give Russia a window of opportunity to go into uh, other parts of Ukraine and make a big push for the capital and for Odessa. And then same thing, Serbia. Serbia is going to go after Kosovo. So I think I think it's going to, if they do it, it's all going to happen at the same time. Serbia is going to attack Kosovo. Belarus is going to attack Lithuania and Poland. And then Russia is going to go for the jugular and they're going to try to go for the capital, and they're going to try to go for Odessa, okay? And so while NATO is focusing on Belarus and Serbia, Russia is going to make their big push, you know? That's how I think it's going to go down. If it happens, I'm not saying I'm 100% sure. I, nobody knows the future. That's just one theory I have. Do I have any live feeds from Ukraine? Uh, no, I don't have any live feeds from Ukraine, unfortunately. Um, it's hard to find it's hard to find live streams uh, from Ukraine. Um, it's tough to do. So, you know, they've they've uh, they've removed a lot of those live streams so people can't watch because they they don't want people to see. They don't want Russia to see Russian spies and stuff like that to see. Ross Niederman says several MiG-31Ks likely armed with Kinzel missiles are now reported to be airborne over Western Russia. Uh, let's do an all-nighter tonight. I don't know if I'll be able to do an all-nighter. That's going to be tough. Um, I'll see. I'll definitely stay up for a little while longer, though, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm sure NATO is warning Ukraine. Yeah, I, I hope that NATO is prepared. I hope that NATO is prepared. Um, Denise, thank you. Thank you for the compliment. I appreciate it. No one on YouTube does work and brings us such incredible info the way you do. I'm a, you're absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Denise Keith. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, what is going on at the border between Pakistan and Afghanistan? Yeah, the uh, Taliban is attacking Pakistan. Um, the Taliban is, the Taliban is attacking Pakistan. K 
Okay, Paul says, I'm going to bed when the stream ends. Bailey says, I should consider having a guest speaker to be a color person on the big news nights. Interesting. Um, that's interesting. That would be pretty cool. I guess having like another person, that would be interesting. My voice is calming during the chaos. Thank you, Raina. Uh, Thaldrin says, checking NY Prepper is second nature to me. First thing I think of. Coffee time. Yeah, I'm not going to drink any coffee now because I won't be able to sleep at all if I drink coffee now. Um, I don't really need coffee. I'm actually not that tired. Um, it's about to go down in Armenia also. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the eclipse, um, I think the eclipse is just an eclipse. I, I think it's a, a sign from God, um, but it's just a normal eclipse. I'm not expecting any kind of cataclysmic event. Um, a lot of people are, are saying that the world is going to end during the eclipse. You know, kind of reminds me of like 2012. Remember 2012? Everybody thought that 2012 the world was going to end because the Mayan calendar was ending or something. Uh, I, I don't think that the eclipse is going to end the world or that there's going to be massive quakes around the world and volcanoes are suddenly going to start going off. I don't believe that. No, I think that's just, you know, fear porn. Um, but, uh, I think the eclipse is definitely a sign from God for sure. Um, and I think also something could happen on the eclipse, like maybe a war, Maybe uh, a natural disaster, but I don't think uh, I don't think it's going to be like a world-ending event. I think something could happen, maybe like a natural disaster or a war or something like that. But uh, it's definitely a sign from God, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, I remember Y two K for sure. Yeah, I remember Y two K. Um, it causes ocean swells. Interesting. Uh, how how does it cause ocean swells? I mean, it's I get, it's just the moon, so the moon always causes. You know, that's how we have tides. I mean, the, the eclipse is just when the moon moves in front of the sun. That's all it is. Um, why are the governors freaking out over the eclipse? I don't know. I'm not sure why. Maybe they're afraid people are going to panic and stop in the streets and w try to watch it and cause problems. I, I don't know. Maybe there's going to be some electrical issues from it. I don't know. A sign of planetary movement. Um, fear of eclipses is pagan. Yes, that's true. Yeah, Uh the sun is part of God's natural creation. Yep, that's right. Yeah, you shouldn't be afraid of the eclipse. You know, there's nothing to be afraid of. Um, that's right. Yeah, maybe they do have inside knowledge. It may affect gravitational pull. Um, yeah, it's possible. Yeah, that could it could affect gravitational pull. It's possible. Yep. I just don't think it's going to be like a world ending event, you know, where we're going to see massive tidal waves 100 feet high and we're going to see 100 volcanoes going off around the world and we're going to see 9.0 magnitude earthquakes all over the world at this all at the same time. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, could there be something else that goes on? A war may start. Maybe a volcano will go off. Maybe an earthquake will happen. Yeah, but it's not going to be like this, you know, cataclysmic event or anything that people are 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 claiming is going to happen, you know. Um, so, yeah, flight restrictions over southern Belarus. That's pretty interesting. Uh, let me see here. Um, so these missiles in Ukraine, they should be impacting. They should be impacting any minute now. Um, I'm just checking some sources to see.
Um, just checking sources to see. So as far as we know, officially right now, six MiG-31s and 13 uh, TU-95s. And then I also saw from another source, there were four TU-22s. Um, so looks like there were some more Chinese aircraft, uh, again, tonight, 36 Chinese aircraft were detected today. Wow. That's even more than yesterday. That's a new record. Uh, there were some uh, ballistic missiles that were launched from uh, Crimea, several short-range missiles launched from Crimea. Uh, yeah, so it, it looks looks legit. It looks like uh, 18 bombers airborne currently, 18 bombers and uh, six, six MiG-31s. And that's not including possible land-based missiles that they could try to launch. Wow, this is pretty serious. Um, this is pretty serious, guys. This could be the biggest missile attack in, in uh, a long time if there's that many bombers in the air. His servant says, I don't know why people freak out about this when it's not John's vision. The martyrdom is before the Ezekiel 38 war. Yeah, so uh, we have, looks like 18 bombers and six MiG-31s over Russia now getting their, their they already launched their missiles. Um, absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. 17 strategic bombers, 17 strategic bombers and six MiG-31s. Um, let me just check and see if there's any updates here. Um, so we have a new record, uh, in China, in Taiwan, China sent 36 planes around Taiwan. That's a new record, 36 planes over the Taiwan Strait and around Taiwan. That's absolutely insane. We have the entire country of Ukraine under an air raid alert right now. Um, so they, I think they're also launching missiles um, from, uh, they're launching them. So they, la they already launched missiles from Crimea, ground-based short-range ballistic missiles from Crimea into Zaporizhia. There's already been some explosions reported. Um, and then, so they're hitting Zaporizhia. And then uh, we have 18, 17 strategic bombers and six MiG-31s in the air. And we're still waiting on those to uh, impact. But we are hearing of kabooms in Zaporizhia right now. Um we're hearing uh, Russian cruise missiles have flown by the Sumy region towards Poltava. So they've already entered Ukrainian airspace. Breaking news. Looks like the first cruise missiles have already entered Ukrainian airspace. They've flown over Sumy, Sumy which is northern, northern Ukraine. Looks like they're going to start landing soon, probably any minute now. Um, we're hearing that there were ballistic missiles 
that came from the Donetsk region as well. So yeah, they're they're coming in already. They're in U Ukrainian airspace now. Uh, breaking news: Forty Russian missiles have been detected on radar throughout the territory of Ukraine. Wow, forty Russian missiles right now. A combination of cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and Shahed drones. Um. Oh man, this is a bad one. This is going to be bad. 10 Russian missiles detected in Dnipropetrovsk. Apparently, uh, the Russians attacked energy infrastructure in Kharkiv. There's fires being reported, according to the city mayor. So Kharkiv has already been hit. There's uh, fires in Kharkiv. Uh, let's see here. There's missiles flying over Krivi-Ri. Missiles flying over Kropnitsky, Pavlograd, and Dnipro. We have one group of Russian missiles detected in the Sumy region flying towards the west. Four groups of missiles detected flying over Kremenchuk, Poltava region. Oh man, they're going, they're hitting all over Ukraine now. Wow, this is serious. We're hearing that there were at least six ballistic missiles already hit, uh, hitting hit Kharkiv tonight. Already six missiles. Um, I think the Polish Air Force. I think the Polish Air Force is probably also in the air right now. Um, they're probably in the air. I hope a, a missile doesn't stray into Europe. Last time they had a big strike like this, they they had a. a missile go into Poland and uh, Poland had to shoot it down. So Oh, man, it's not looking good, guys. Massive attack right now. Uh, we have breaking news uh, in Kharkiv. Apparently, all the power has gone out to Kharkiv. There's no electricity now in Kharkiv. So, looks like the power went out. The missiles uh, hit energy infrastructure. So the, the, the power uh, is out. John, yeah, get a hold of Jeremy. Yeah, check up on him, please. And let me know. Let me know his status when you get a chance. Let me know if he's okay or not. Please let me know. Keep me updated. Um. Kate of Buckingham, thank you so much for the donation. You're so kind, Kate. Thank you very much. Thank you for these brilliant repos reports. You are absolutely the best. Thank you, Kate. That's very, very generous of you. I, I can't believe that somebody would be willing to donate that much to me. That's just incredible. Um, that's just, I don't know what to say. Thank you very, very much. Um I know people work hard for their money. So when they donate money, you know, I'm always very appreciative of it. You know, everybody works hard.
for their money these days. You know, life is tough in 2024. So thank you very much. Um, it's very nice of you. Thank you so much. I think you're one of the top donors, if not the top donor on this channel. Thank you so much. Wish you all the best. Um, thank you once again, Kate. Thank you very much. Real estate photography says take out the power to take out the communications. Yep. My soul hurts for the families and children. Yes, exactly. Um, I, I totally feel, I mean, you know, that's when, when, what really makes me mad is when people say, oh, why do you support Ukraine? The government is so corrupt. You know, it's one of the most corrupt governments in the world. Well, it's not about the governments. It's about the freaking people that, you know, are, are having to endure this hell, you know, with missiles raining down on them constantly. I mean, this is ridiculous. How can, I mean, how is this, you know, we haven't seen something like this since World War II, guys. This is what Hitler did. This is the same tactic that Hitler used on all the countries he invaded. Okay, read about World War II. And this is exactly what Hitler did to Warsaw when he invaded Poland. He, you know, shelled Warsaw and all the big Polish cities. Um, you know, he, he did that to France. He did that to Britain. I mean, this is what Putin is doing now in 2024. You know, we're not immune to war. You know, we've been so lucky the last 50 years. We haven't had a major war, but we're not beyond war. We're still human beings and war is inevitable. OK, with all the nuclear weapons and all the the militaries around the world, it's, it's war is inevitable. We can't just think that war is never going to happen again. Um. Uh, yeah, Blitzkrieg. Who is Lee? Lee Wilbarger, inventor Lee Wilbarger, I'm assuming. KLW World News. He's got cameras of Ukraine. He's on uh, Rumble. Go on Rumble. He's He should be streaming. He's got live cameras from Ukraine. I don't know how he gets them, but he's got some. He's got a good amount. Um, Stalin starved the Ukrainian people. Yes, he did in the Holodomor. Yep. Um, Putin is a Stalin incarnate. Yeah. I mean, Putin's been in power for what, 25 years now. I think that's more than, uh, Stalin was in power. How, let me see. How long was Stalin in power for? Uh, let's see. How long was he in power? Stalin, uh, He was actually, let's see, he actually wasn't in power that long. Oh, yeah, he was from 1922 to 1952, uh, 30 years. So he's pushing on Stalin territory. Uh, Putin is basically going to be the longest serving president in Russian history, essentially. Um, but look at this flight, guys. This is a military flight. Look at this from that took off from London and it's now heading over uh, Russia. Check this out near Nizhny Novgorod. Um, look at that. That's weird. I don't know what kind of plane that is. Um, has no has no uh, call sign. It's an Airbus 319. Let's see. What kind of plane is that? Looks like some kind of weird VIP flight. Uh, it's some kind of, let's see here. It's some kind of uh, VIP plane, I'm assuming. Wow. Flying across Russia like that. That's interesting. 
and in the middle of a missile strike too that's an interesting time to be flying we also have a special flight squadron plane in the air looks like it's heading to krasnoyarsk interesting um but let's just see what's going on here i'm going to read off some of the info about these strikes uh so yeah it looks like kharkiv is without power um electricity is gone they hit the see they hit the uh, energy infrastructure earlier on in the attack it looks like they hit kharkiv first to take the power out to kharkiv for some reason because kharkiv got hit first and then also zaporizhia got hit first as well from crimea So, so Zaporizhia got hit first, and then, and then Kharkiv got hit. It looks like they wanna. It it looks like they wanted to take the power out first. Um. I think that is an emergency VIP plane. Yeah, but it's coming out of it's coming out of. Uh, the uk look it's coming out of the uk let's see where did it take off from took off from uh some tiny airport here london luton airport what the heck some tiny no name airport uh london luton airport is where it took off from took off from london luton from luton england which is like a smaller city north of London, and it's flying over Russia now. Very interesting. We'll have to see where it goes. Um, and let's see if the nuclear warplanes are probably still in the air, I'm assuming. Yeah, they're still in the air because of the uh, missiles. Looks like one of them went off the tracker here. Look, this one went off the flight radar. Um, and the other one is still airborne. So yeah, they're on high alert. Um, wow. Wow. This is insane. Maybe it's giving Putin a nuclear visit. Yeah, that's very possible. Yeah. Could be giving Putin a nuclear visit for sure. Very possible. Um, Maybe an MI6 agent. Interesting, yeah. Could be. Looks like a Blitzkrieg lightning attack. Dismantled the power, then move in. Right, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking they take out the power and then they go in. I don't know. Or they, or maybe they wanted to take out the power before the main missile strike. Like, So there's more chaos going on. Um. There's currently a missile strike underway over Ukraine. That's what we're talking about. Um, so there's a big uh, missile strike right now. Two more MiGs took off. Oh, my gosh. Two more. Wow. Wow. Uh, so yeah, what we know so far, I'm just going to summarize everything for people just joining in. What we know so far is uh, we know that there's at least 18 Russian bombers that took off uh, a little while ago and uh, they were fully loaded with cruise missiles. They launched the cruise missiles and the missiles are already entering Ukrainian territory. There were also as many as six MiG-31s, which are the fighter jets that uh, Russia uses to launch their hypersonic missiles. They took off. Uh, then there were some short-range ballistic missile attacks on southern Ukraine from Crimea. Um, and they're impacting Zaporizhia right now. They're hitting the Zaporizhia region. And those actually impacted a while ago. And they're still impacting now. There were also some ballistic missile strikes on Kharkiv already. 
and they hit some energy infrastructure and the, the power is out to the whole city, apparently. So, um, and we know the missiles are flying all over the country right now. So it looks like they're, they're trying to go after the entire, every city they're, they're going after every, every city basically. So, uh, it's, it's gonna, it's a massive, massive attack. Um, uh, I haven't seen this in a while either. Why doesn't the U.S. send F-35s to defend against bombing runs like this? I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe because they want a war. I, I don't know. It, it's really bizarre to me. I mean, NATO has all the assets. They could fly right into Ukraine and shoot down all these missiles with, you know, even with uh, they wouldn't even need to use anything fancy. They could just use... Um, you know, just regular air-to-air missiles like the Sidewinders. They could fly in with the Sidewinders and shoot them down. But uh, I guess then Russia would be able to track it on radar and then they would accuse the U.S. of being involved. Um, Bama Fanatic says, I would bet this flight is moving Russian embassy officials back to Russia. Oh, maybe. Yeah, that could be it. But if they were Russian embassy officials, why would they be going to Siberia? Looks like they're going to Siberia or something. Um, wouldn't the embassy officials probably land in Moscow? You know, I mean, I don't know how many embassy officials live in these areas out here in Russia and going towards the Urals. There's less people. I would imagine they would just land in Moscow, but I guess anything's possible. So yeah, it's a weird situation. Um, So this is a crazy situation here. Um, We still have two uh, nuclear war command and control planes in the air, too. Uh, they're still in the air. So, um, Trump 2024, if we make it that far to election day. Amy Sturdivant, how's it going, Amy? Good to see you. Just checked 15 cams in Ukraine and didn't see anything going on. I guess the camera to see would be uh, Kharkiv. Let me see if I can pull up some cameras. Um, I usually don't like to show the cameras of Ukraine because it gives Russia free battle damage assessment. But yeah, I can't. There's no cameras available in Ukraine. They're hard to find. They've shut them down basically because of, uh, you know, for security reasons. Um, uh, let's see some of the latest news here. Uh, we're hearing that eight S-300 missiles have landed in uh, Ukraine. Uh, we're hearing cruise missiles from Chernihiv Oblast have entered Kiev. So we have cruise missiles heading towards the capital of Ukraine right now. Uh, we also have a cruise missile in the Mykolaiv Oblast. Okay, that's southern Ukraine near Odessa. So it looks like they're going after Kiev and they're going after Odessa. 
Cruise missile detected over Kyiv two minutes ago. Uh, several cruise missiles in Cherkasy. Uh, Krup, Krupovnitsky, is, there's also a cruise missile there. Apparently, we have two more MiG-31s taking off from Savas Leica Air Force Base. So two more MiG-31s. Those are the ones that carry the hypersonic missiles. So that's a total of six MiG-31s in the air tonight and 17 Russian bombers. And then, of course, the uh, ground missiles that they're launching from the ground. Um, so... So, you know, probably hundreds of missiles, hundreds of missiles, guys. This could be the biggest strike yet. This could be the biggest strike yet. Uh, Kharkiv has completely lost power. Um, we're hearing that... Uh, let's see, man... This is absolutely insane. Uh, hypersonic Kinzel missile launches have been reported. Ballistic missiles are exiting Crimea, heading towards Kriviri. Wow. This is absolutely insane, guys. It's really popping off. Wow. Wow. Cruise missiles in Zaporizhia reported. Chernihiv, Mikolaev, Kiev, Cherkasy. Two more MiG-31s took off from Savas Leica Air Force Base. Let's see, where is that? Let me see if I can uh, find that here. Where is that? Savas Leica. I don't know where that is. Anybody know? I don't know. We still have uh, nuclear warplanes in the air here in the U.S. We still have nuclear warplanes airborne. What's this? I got some planes. Yeah, we still have at least one airborne still. Um, and then there was another one over Northern California. It looks like it might have just got refueled. No. Um, well, my flight radar is getting real buggy here tonight. Not sure what's going on. Um, so yeah, it looks like this missile strike is, is affecting the entire country. Group of cruise missiles uh, near Dnipropetrovsk. There's a Kinzel hypersonic missile in Dnipropetrovsk. Uh, we have um, ballistic missiles coming from Kharkiv. Multiple Kinzel missiles flying on Dnip over Dnipropetrovsk. Launch of a Kinzel at Zaporizhia. So, wow. There's problems with electricity in Khmelnytsky, which is in western Ukraine. And uh, there's a total blackout in Kharkiv. Now, what's very concerning is in Khmelnytsky, there's actually a nuclear power plant. So I hope that, you know, that power plant doesn't lose electricity because then we could have a meltdown. Uh, there's a power plant in, in Khmelnytsky. So...
Yeah, there's a power plant in Melnitsky, so that's not good. Um, see, Melnitsky is uh, over here in western Ukraine, not far from uh, Poland. There's a nuclear power plant there. Um, but it looks like basically all of Ukraine is getting, getting hit. Uh, apparently there were 11 ballistic missiles that hit Kharkiv so far. 11 ballistic missiles. Wow. So we're hearing of a total blackout in Kharkiv right now. Um, we're hearing of one group of cruise missiles in the Kharkiv Oblast, two groups of cruise missiles, in uh, Kirov Hrad, one group in the uh, Poltava region and one group in Kharkiv. Um, so they already launched hypersonic missiles. Man, it's hard to keep track of everything. There's so much going on. This is absolutely insane. Um, cruise missiles have entered Venezia. Venezia is now going to get hit or somewhere nearby. Uh, wow, cruise missile flying over Venezia. We're also hearing of drones heading towards Dnipro. Petrovsk cruise missiles are flying over Krivi Re again. Cruise missiles flying towards Kiev. Um, wow. Wow. I'm going to see if I can't find some footage. I'm going to see if I can't find some footage. We have some reports coming from Zaporizhia. Uh, so far, at least eight missiles were launched at Zaporizhia. They hit infrastructure and damaged houses. That's coming from the uh, government, uh, the governor over there. Um So yeah, it's it's not looking good right now. Um, it's not looking good. Sorry, I'm not checking the chat. I'm just trying to see what's going on here. Um, headline: Death or surrender? IDF arrests 650, including senior Hamas officials, in Shifa. Oh wow. Wow. Just saw first kaboom on cam. John Hoover says, Greg, all contacts in Ukraine are offline right now. Oh, man. Well, John, uh, I just heard that multiple multiple missiles were heading towards Kremenchuk. I heard I just heard two groups of cruise missiles were heading towards Kremenchuk, just so you know. Tim Aitken says your channel is spot on and very valuable to us. Thank you very much, Tim. I appreciate it. Um, Amy Sturdivant says I love this family so much. Y'all are so supportive and amazing. If nothing else, we shared some time and lots of info. Thank you, Greg. My Ukraine cams just went down. Um, you're not going to really see much on those cameras. I mean, you may hear some kabooms or something, but you're not going to really see much. Um, end the stream and restart. Yeah, you know, I was thinking of ending the stream and restarting. Um, I might have to do that. Yeah, I might have to do that in a couple minutes. Um or I could just keep it going, I guess, and forget about editing it. Um, maybe I'll just forget about it for tonight. I'll just, whatever. If people, they can just scroll through and find what's important, you know. Um, Christopher James, thank you very much, Christopher. I appreciate it. 
Thank you. Um, Blue Angel says Ukraine should have never listened to the Biden administration. Yeah, the Biden administration, um, the Biden administration uh, basically threw them to the wolves. They said, we're going to back you up. And they didn't, you know. They threw Ukraine to the wolves. They they left them by themselves. Mud and Munitions says, great stream, super great and valuable news. Thank you, Mud and Munitions. I appreciate that, bro. Thank you so much. Um, Aldo says, I bet the plane is heading to Kozvinsky Mountain. Yeah, it could be going to Koz- Kozvinsky Kamen or... Uh, could be going to Yamantu. Um, Kozvinsky Kamin is further north. Um, it's it's further north, like in the northern Urals. Um, but then down here near Chelyabinsk is where you have the uh, Yamantu. But it's actually curving south now, you see. It's curving south. Uh, maybe it's just a flyover. Maybe Russia gave permission to some diplomats in the UK to fly over or something. I don't know. Um, there's a Russian special flight squadron plane that just took off from Moscow. Um, so no, Yamantu mountain is the Southern one. Kozvinsky Kamen is the Northern one. Yamantu mountain is in the Southern Urals, not the Northern one. I think you're confused, Aldo. Double check but I'm not going to argue with you, obviously, but Yamantu is the southern one. Kozvinsky coming is the northern one, from what I remember. Um, So let me see if I can get some uh, breaking news here. Some of the latest info coming in. Um, Oh, yeah, we have people uh, in the train station now. Let me get this up on the screen. We have people in the train station right now in, uh, in Kiev. This is coming out of uh, Kiev in uh, in the train station here. So uh, that's what we're looking at right now. Um, Cruise missiles are now in the Kiev Oblast. Wow. Looks like most of them are affecting Kiev, but it looks like these missiles are targeting everywhere. They're, they're targeting uh, the entire country. Um, massive, massive missile attack going on right now. Um, Maybe Putin stepped up the Ukraine attacks due to possible France assistance soon. Yeah, that's very possible. Very possible. Very possible. Uh, What's going on, Mr. Gray from Western New York? 
Can't the flight be a prison exchange? It could be. That's very possible. Yeah, maybe. But why would they be doing a prison exchange, prisoner exchange with Britain? I don't know of any any British prisoners. I mean, it's possible, but I'm just I just don't know why they would exchange prisoners with Britain. Yeah, it's very sad. Yeah. Very sad, Diva's mom. Yeah. It's very unfortunate. You know, we're in the Ides of March. We're in the Ides of March right now. Um, so, yeah, people are now sheltering in train stations waiting for the missiles to go away. Um, so... Very sad situation tonight in Ukraine. Um, let me see for if there's any updates here. Uh, Massive disru disruption to internet connectivity around Kharkiv. Yeah, for sure. If there's a blackout, there's definitely going to be an internet outage. Yeah, it looks like um, 15 ballistic missiles have struck energy facilities in Kharkiv, and most of the city is without power. 15 ballistic missiles hit energy facilities in Kharkiv. Wow. That's that's a serious blackout. If they hit if if they hit all different substations, they're not going to have power for a while. Their power is going to be out for a, for a while. Um So, yeah, we have a massive uh, strike underway in Ukraine right now. People are hiding in uh, train stations across the country. Um, uh, I was thinking of shutting down the stream and then restarting it. Um, I don't know if it's even worth doing that at this point. I think I'm just going to leave it going. Um, cause I think if I just shut it down and restart it, half the people won't rejoin. That's usually what happens when I do that. So I'll just keep it going. Um, yeah, very sad situation. Very sad situation, you know, that people have to take cover like that. I mean, could you imagine if that happened here in the U S um, so 
me see if I can find some more info. Uh, yeah, we're hearing nonstop kabooms in Kharkiv, Zaporizhia, Krivi, Ri, Dnipro in the last few minutes. Um, wow. Wow. See here, uh, Kharkiv is almost without any electricity. We're hearing of kabooms in the Khmelnytsky region, which is western Ukraine. Uh, two more MiG-31s took off, so another two MiG-31s just took off. So that's that's a total of 10 MiG-31s tonight. So two more just took off, so it looks like they're going to strike again. Um, so we're hearing of missile impacts all over the country. Kharkiv is without power. Uh, we're hearing impacts in Khmelnytsky. We're hearing that uh, the MiG-31s that took off earlier have now landed at the airbase that they took off from, but now there's two more heading out. Um, but this is very serious, guys, because Khmelnytsky, the one city that they hit with missiles, if they're trying to take the power out in Khmelnytsky, uh, there's a, there's a nuclear power plant there in Melnitsky guys. There's a, there's a nuclear power plant. Um, you know, that thing could, that thing could melt down. Let me see if I can show you guys on the map where that thing is. Uh, that thing could melt down if they, if they target it, um, they target the area it could lose it could lose power it's actually it's actually closer to rivni Let's see here so this is khmelnytsky right here and then up here you have uh where's that power plant right here this is the power plant right here khmelnytsky nuclear power plant um look at those reactors looks like two of them are operational yeah so you have two reactors here this looks like a cooling tower um that's near rivni but you know if they keep hitting this area that power plant could go down and uh lose lose external power and then it's not going to be able to cool itself could melt down. Um, so it looks like two more MiG 31s took off. Um, this information's coming in fast. Cruise missile in uh, Ivano Frankivsk. Ivano Frankivsk. There's a missile going to Ivano Frankivsk. Cruise missile has entered Ternopil airspace. Oh no! Looks like they're going towards Poland. Um, let me see if the Polish air force is airborne. They usually go airborne now. Uh, anytime these missiles go up, they they go airborne. Um, there's no there's no announcement by Poland right now. We're hearing of sporadic power outages in Dnipro-Petrovsk. Sporadic power outages in Dnipro-Petrovsk. Wow.
We have breaking news, guys. Looks like the Russians attacked the Dnipro hydroelectric dam with missiles. Wow. Emergency alert. Emergency alert. There's information that the Russians attacked the Dnipro hydroelectric power plant and the dam. Apparently, they were not able to destroy the dam. Kharkiv was attacked with 20 ballistic missiles. Wow, they're going for the dam, guys. This is very, very serious. They're going to try to destroy the dam. Wow. This is just coming in now. Breaking news, emergency alert. The Russians have tried to attack the Dnipro hydroelectric dam. Wow. Major breaking news. That dam is absolutely massive, guys. If they hit that dam, that's it. That that whole area is going to flood. Breaking news, guys. Major breaking news. The, the dam is in Dnipro. The dam is in Dnipro. Um, let me show you guys on the map. I'll show you on the map. Um, major breaking news coming in. Russia attempted to destroy the dam in the Dnipro, Dnipro uh, Petrovsk area. There's a huge dam there. There's a giant, Ukraine has that big river in the middle of it. It's called the Dnipro River. And there's a massive dam over there that holds back a ton of water. Um, I'm assuming they're talking about this dam here. Let me see. Um, I think they're talking about this one. Uh, let me see. Or maybe they're talking about the one in Kremenchuk. Uh, let's see. Maybe the one in Kiev. It's the DPP dam. I don't know if that's in uh, Kiev. Um, but they have all these dams. So here's the river in Ukraine and they have all these dams periodically, like every couple of miles, there's a dam and Russia tried to hit one of these dams tonight. That's what we're hearing right now. Preliminary. Yeah. This one right here. Wow. If that's true, that's insane. This is a huge power plant guys. This is, uh, I think it's one of the big, the, the massive hydroelectric power plant in Ukraine. Dnipro hydroelectric power plant. Look at this thing. They tried to hit this dam with the missiles. That's why they were hitting Dnipro so hard. Look at this dam. This dam is massive. Look at this thing. They were trying to hit it with missiles. It holds back all this water here. They it's just upstream from Zaporizhia. It would have it would flood this whole area. Um, it would flood this whole area here. It would flood Zaporizhia. It's a huge, huge uh, hydro plant. So they were trying to hit that. That's what uh, preliminary information is is saying that they were attempting to hit that dam, and there was no no major damage reported. Unable to cause serious damage.
Wow, breaking news. Yeah, I'm staying up for a while too. Unfortunately, I was hoping to go to sleep earlier tonight, but uh, where's the dam? Uh, you should see it right on your screen. Should be right on the screen. Um, so it looks like they were trying to take out this dam, the Dnipro Hydroelectric Power Plant. They were trying to take that dam down. Un they were unable to do serious damage to it. Uh, let's see here. We have more Kinzel hypersonic missiles heading to Khmelnytsky and Cherkasy. Um, there was a cruise missile fired towards Venezia. Russia launched eight missile strikes in Zaporizhia, the head of the regional military administration, Ivan Fedorov, said. Infrastructure facilities were hit and civilian buildings were damaged. Information about victims is being clarified. We're also, we also know they're hitting Ivano-Frankivsk. Wow. Repeated launch of Kinzel hypersonic missiles towards Khmelnytsky. I'll say that again. Repeated launch of Kinzel hypersonic missiles to Khmelnytsky. I wonder why they're targeting Khmelnytsky so much. I mean, there's nothing out there in Khmelnytsky, uh, as far as I know, unless they have some intelligence about something. Uh, Yeah, so we have we have major breaking news. Russia tried to hit the dam in Dnipro, Dnipro Petrovsk. Major breaking news, guys. We have missiles in the Zidomir region going for Lviv. They're going for Lviv, guys. This is where things could escalate because one of those missiles could head into Poland. That's what happened last time, and Poland had to shoot down one of the missiles. That's what happened last time. Uh, Shadow653, thank you for the donation. There's a U.S. aerial refueling plane circling. Yes, exactly. Uh, yep, I, I was showing that earlier. Um, yeah, they always fly in that area anytime there's a Ukrainian missile strike. Um. If I Google dam attack on Google News, nothing shows up. Yeah, nothing's going to show up yet. It's way too soon. Um, thank you again, Shadows653. So, yeah, it looks like uh, Russia launched several missiles at the uh, Dnipro hydroelectric power plant, and uh, apparently they did not cause serious damage. They did not cause serious damage. Um, yeah, I hope Poland doesn't get hit either, Amy. Uh, Allison says, glad you're staying on, Greg. This is too important to leave. So many said, i um, daft following this. But I like to be correctly informed. And Greg, Greg is the man. This is all tragic for the innocent. Thank you, Allison. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Diva's mom says, I think they will go into Poland on purpose. Yeah, I think uh, they might send missiles into Poland just to scare Poland. Yeah, I think it's very possible. Um, Zaporizhia power plant is also rigged, and I've been waiting on Poland since Lukashenko and Putin were joking about marching on Warsaw. Yeah, yeah, they threatened to march into Warsaw. Yep. Yeah, and they're building up massive amounts of troops. Uh, in Belarus, right on the border with Lithuania. Um, Amy says they haven't caused serious damage yet. I bet Putin isn't done. 
Well, yes, exactly. Yeah, they uh, there's two more uh, MiG 31s that just took off. Um, yeah, I don't think this is it. I think they're gonna do another one, and I think they're gonna strike again in in the next couple hours. I think we're gonna see another big launch. It looks like they were trying to take down that whole dam, though. Um, Bailey says, no, that's not the point. Literally nothing shows up. No search results at all. Wow. Yeah, it's it's like they're hiding it, right? Blue Angel says, I said a prayer for your family. Thank you, Blue Angel. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, I have some cousins. Cousins and uh, let's see, who else do I have? Most of my family actually left Poland, believe it or not. There was a lot of them up until like, I would say the early 2000s, there were a lot of them still there. Then they moved out to America or Ireland or the UK. But I still have uh, cousins there and I have uh, one aunt there, actually two aunts. Let me think. I have, I think I have, uh, yeah, at least one aunt and then I have several cousins there that are, and I, I'm close with all of them, you know, I mean, I haven't talked to them in a few years, but close, like when I was a kid, you know, we would always visit them and they would visit us and stuff. So, um, luckily they're not right next to the Ukrainian border. Uh, there's pretty good distance from there, but still, um, The mainstream media was reporting on it for 10 minutes and that's it. Bradley Moore says you sent me something. Russia can't muster a 338 Lapua with hot hand loads. That's funny. Yeah, hot tungsten core hand loads. Hot tungsten core hand loads. That would be a good load for a, a that would be a good Putin load. Send me to Moscow with my 338 with tungsten hand loads and I'll take care of Putin. <laughs> Just get me in there somehow and I'll take him out. Canada Plus gifted 20 memberships. Thank you, Canada Plus. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for the donation. I hope you're having a good Thursday night or actually it might be uh, Friday morning already. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's over. I think Putin is going to reload and launch a second a second strike. I think this is actually just the first strike. I think they're going to, I think they're going to launch. I think they're going to launch again. I wish we had the Airwolf chopper. Yeah. Airwolf. Oh man. That was such a good show. It had the best theme song to it also. Airwolf. Yeah. That's such a classic. Yeah. So for those of you guys just tuning in, massive missile strike in Ukraine tonight. Um, doesn't look like it's over. Potentially hundreds of missiles have been uh, launched at Ukraine. Um, and we're hearing that the city of Kharkiv has lost power. We're hearing of, uh, sporadic power, power outages across the country. And they tried to go after the Dnipro hydroelectric power plant. Russia tried to strike it with missiles and they did not cause serious damage from what initial reports are saying um so it's not it's not good though it's not a good sign um they might try to hit this plant again maybe they want to blow the whole plant or the uh they want to destroy the dam massive dam here guys look at this thing let me see if i can get a street view you can do a street view of this dam so this is the dam they tried to hit tonight Look at this thing, guys. This thing is just massive. It holds back a ton of water. Um, so they tried to hit this dam tonight. Okay. Uh, and if they hit that, th th that, would, that would flood the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. All that water would come down and flood the Zaporizhia power plant. You know? Because um, that's upstream from Z the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. So, um, let me see if I can get the emergency action messages, uh, loaded. 
Um, let me see here. See if I, I'm going to set up the emergency action messages now so we can listen. I'm not hearing any emergency action message right now. I also have the Russian buzzer going. Um, let me see if I can get the EAMs on here. Hold on. Um, but look at this power plant or this dam, massive dam. I don't think it would be easy to destroy. They would need some serious missiles to hit, to, to blow it. I mean, it's a huge dam. Um, let me see if I can get like a side view. Uh, see if we can look at the side of it. Yeah, see, it, it curves. It's got these big concrete walls. It's like a half circle. Um, I mean, it, a lot of concrete. They would have to blow all that concrete up. It's pretty substantial construction there um, to take that out. Okay, but they were trying to hit that tonight. I'm going to see if I can get the emergency action messages uh, set up here so we can listen to them. Um, see here uh EAMs were off the hook since 6 a.m. Yeah, there were a lot of EAMs. All you have to do is crack it and it would blow. Yeah, still you need a pretty strong Still, you would need a pretty strong, uh, pretty strong warhead to destroy that kind of concrete. More MIGs taking off. Russia is a paper tiger. There was a guy with the DOD in the chat. Interesting. What did he say? What did he say? Um, interesting. So let me see here. Uh, I'm going to try to get the EAM set up. Give me one sec. Hold on, guys. Reuters is reporting something. So you guys, did you guys hear the static when I just played that? Did you, were you able to hear that fuzz? Three MIGs took off. Yeah, I just heard about that. Okay, you did hear the fuzz. Okay. All right, good. All right, so yeah, it's, uh, so that's, so we have the EAM set up. So if any EAMs, emergency action messages come through, we'll hear them uh, through that. I also have the Russian buzzer set up, but the problem is that it's kind of annoying. 
because it makes like this noise constantly. Maybe I'll get the, uh, should I get the buzzer going? I don't know, maybe not. Maybe that's too much. I'm gonna get the Russian buzzer. Let's turn the buzzer on. The Russian buzzer is like the uh, EAMs for Russia. Let me get the buzzer going and because you know sh things are happening, so maybe we'll maybe we'll hear something. Okay, can you guys hear the buzz? That's the Russian buzzer. That's the Russian nuclear nuclear uh, frequency for their nuclear forces. Okay. I'm going to lower the volume a little. So it's not too annoying. I lowered the volume. You should be able to hear it like very faint in the background. I won't hear anything useful there. It's a channel marker. Russian military uses CIS data packet now. Uh, is that true? I don't know. I, I hear a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, buzzer buzzer messages that still go out. So I don't know. I don't know. Do you Do you listen to the buzzer much? I have not talked to Lee since the attacks. No, not yet. I've been so busy just trying to cover them. Um, let me see. Let me check my phone and see if he tried to call me or anything. There's still an air raid alert in uh, Ukraine. Still an air raid alert. Yeah, I haven't heard anything from Lee. Logan says, last time I listened to the buzzer, I heard a Russian speaker after an hour. Yeah, the Russian buzzer, usually they send messages right around the morning time and the midday time. So um, we might actually hear something. I have it set really, really quiet. Um, so this way it's not. This way it's not. Um, too annoying. I have it going in the background. Hopefully that's quiet enough so it's not too annoying. Good night, Diva's mom. Thanks for tuning in and uh, thanks for all your prayers. Thanks for all your support. I hope you have a good, a good uh, night's sleep. It's still pretty. Oh, we have something coming in. EAM, possibly. So, yeah, we're hearing that uh, Russia tried to strike this dam in Zaporizhia. 
How's that buzzer? Is that buzzer too loud? Let me know if it's too loud. Can you, you should be able to just barely hear it in the background. I don't want it to be too annoying. If it's too annoying, let me know. Um, but I think it makes sense to keep it on. Bailey says it's an older dam. Just like many in the U.S., the concrete is likely susceptible to damage due to age alone. Not an expert. Yeah, it is an older dam. Yeah, they built it during the Cold War. No, it's okay. It's fine. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so let me see. Uh, let me see here. Let me check up on some of the latest here. Um, hold on, I'm checking some sources here. Uh, oh yeah, we have a post from the Polish, the Polish uh, military posted something on Twitter. Let me get that up on the screen. Let me get that up on the screen. Uh, I don't think you guys can read Polish. I can. They're saying here, we inform you that tonight at night, it was observed an intensive attack uh, of long range airplanes of the Russian Federation. Actually, I can just translate it. It'll be easier. We would like to inform you that tonight there is intense activity of long-range aviation of the Russian Federation related to missile strikes of Tu-95s, Tu-22s, and MiG-31s carrying, carried out against objects located in the territory of Ukraine. All necessary procedures to ensure the safety of Polish airspace have been launched, and the DORSZ is monitoring the situation on an ongoing basis. We warn that Polish and allied aircraft have been activated, which may result in increased noise levels, especially in the southeastern part of the country. So Poland has probably scrambled their F-16s to be ready to shoot down any stray missiles that may try to, you know, go into Poland. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, if they, if we get any messages on the Russian buzzer. Um, we might get some messages on the buzzer. Uh, yeah, this is insane. Very insane. About 15 blasts heard this morning in the Kharkiv region. Yep. Uh... Do we think this may go nuclear? Uh, yeah, I think, Amy, I think it's inevitable that this is going to go nuclear, yeah. Um, NATO, what does it say here? Missile strikes may be targeting NATO command bunkers as a warning to Macron. Very possible, very possible. Um a plane left London and landed in Belarus. Well, there's actually this one plane still here in the air in uh, in Russia that took off from London, and it's in southern southern Russia now. Uh, that's pretty interesting. We also have a Russian special flight squadron plane going to Krasnoyarsk. Uh, but it looks like it's going north first, which is pretty strange. Um, let me see if I can uh, share this with you guys here. So the Polish Air Force has activated their, uh, their, their, they've gone, you know, into full defense mode. see here so we have one nuclear war command and control plane still in the air it's over uh, Oklahoma right now 
we have a bunch of these planes here oh yeah we have another another e6 in the air we have two nuclear warplanes in the air um that's pretty unusual for this late at night to have two in the air and then we have this weird plane from london that's going in russia flying in russia somewhere now looks like it's going towards kazakhstan or uzbekistan and we have a russian uh special flight squadron plane going north looks like it's going to murmansk just left moscow that's a vip plane um so very interesting um Elaine, Elaine Lurwell says, Greg, it's your channel. You do what you want. Thank you, Elaine, for the reminder. I appreciate that. Is the flight squadron picking up the dictator? It's very possible. Yeah, it's possible. Do I think the U.S. military will get involved? Yeah, I think I think NATO's going to get involved. I, I think uh, it's because because they're Ukraine is losing the war. You know, they're they're losing the war and uh, they have to get involved at this point because, you know, they they're not going to allow Russia to take over the capital. You know, they're not going to allow that. So. Um, So uh, I'm gonna just step. I'm gonna step up for a couple minutes here. I've been sitting in my chair for four hours, four and a half hours. I've been sitting here. So let me stand up and walk around and uh, get some food, and I'll be right back. Um, I got the EAMs up and I got the buzzer going. So um, I'll be right back. Thank you, Shadows653, for the donation. There's a fire now at the dam that Russia hit. Okay, so we now have a fire in this dam. Um, I'll be right back. I'm just going to get up and walk around a little. I've been sitting for so long. Be right back. A couple minutes.
What's going on, guys? I'm back. Just had to eat something. Um, I'm actually going to switch my computer. Uh, I'm going to go up to my big computer because that one's a little more, more has more capabilities um, for this situation. So uh, you might see the stream cut off for, for a minute or two. And I'm going to... Uh, Restart on my computer. Polish military posted. Uh, can I don't understand what you mean, Amy. Um, so I'm going to just cut off. I'm going to cut off the stream for a sec, okay? I'm going to switch over to my big computer.
What's going on guys? Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you guys can hear me or not. What's going on guys? Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you guys can hear me or not. What's going on guys? Let me know if you can hear me. Okay, looks like you guys can hear me. Okay, looks like you guys can hear me. Okay, yeah, the echo is just from my speakers. Yeah, I switched over uh, my computer so I could have more capabilities because you know, I wasn't planning on doing a long stream. So I was just streaming off of my uh, laptop. And my laptop is great, but doesn't have the same capabilities as my computer. So, um, so uh, I'm going to try to see if I can get some some stuff going here uh let me just check and see if there's any new news um let me just check and see the latest i had to get something to eat uh so we have some major breaking news emergency alert the zaporizhia nuclear power plant is now on the verge of blackout that's the giant nuclear power plant in ukraine the znpp is on the verge of blacking out so looks like um looks like this could affect the giant nuclear power plant. Uh looks like the there's missile warning sirens in Belgorod. Missile warning sirens in Belgorod right now. Wow, oh my gosh absolutely crazy picture here guys this is absolutely insane oh my gosh wow let me get this on the screen this is on this is insane um this is absolutely crazy wow See here, we got another picture here coming in. Wow. Let's see if I can, uh, Wow, this is insane, guys. We got a crazy picture here coming in. Um, I'm going to see if I can uh, fit this all on the screen somehow. It's going to be tough. Wow, this is crazy. Wow. Wow. So here we have a picture from from the actual uh, bridge. Look at that, or from the uh, from the dam. Wow, that is insane, guys! And you could actually see a lot of smoke coming out of the bri uh, off the dam there. In this one picture, you can see a crazy amount of smoke. This is absolutely crazy. Wow, let me uh, just clean this up a little bit. Hold on. Let me see if I can uh, trim this down a little. Wow. 
Wow, guys. Absolutely crazy footage coming in. Look at this. This is absolutely insane. That's just crazy. Wow. Look at that. Wow. This is very serious, guys. This is this is insane. And we're now hearing that there's air raid sirens going off in Belgorod. So it looks like uh, Ukraine may, or, or the partisans, the Russian partisans may try to launch some type of a retaliation strike or something. I don't know. This is just ridiculous, though. Look at this, guys. This is insane. This is absolutely crazy. Look at that. Wow. Look at that, guys. There's a ton of smoke um, on that one. On the one picture, you can see just a ton of smoke. That's just insane. Wow. Wow, guys, this is insane. This is just crazy. Um, Shadow653, thank you for the donation. The news from Ukraine on X has basically stopped. Yeah, the ZNPP could melt down. You sent me a link to the live fire map of Ukraine. Okay, thank you very much, Cat Sui. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, look at those pictures, guys. You can see there's a ton, I mean, a ton of smoke coming out. That looks really bad. You can actually see here in this picture. Um, look at that. This is insane. Look at that fire. That is insane, guys. 
So they tried to, Ukraine tried to make it seem like it was no big deal and the pictures don't lie. You know, they always, Ukraine always tries to minimize. They want to always make it seem like it's not as bad as it is. But, you know, the pictures don't lie. Look at that. I mean, that is just insane. And and look at the smoke from, the, from uh, this, this one here. The smoke is just ridiculous. Look at the smoke here on this one. Look at the smoke coming out. Look at that massive amount of smoke there. That just looks ridiculous. Okay. Look at the smoke. It's a huge plume of smoke there. So this is, they were definitely trying to take it out. There's no doubt in my mind. I mean, that's a huge plume of smoke. Look at that plume goes all the way all the way up into the sky huge plume absolutely huge look at that look at all that smoke that is ridiculous so they definitely hit that brit that uh dam really hard they hit that with thing with multiple missiles. I have no doubt about it. Um, wow. The Ukrainian Air Energatom confirms the disconnection of the overhead line 750 kilovolt Dneprovskaya. Okay, so that's a high voltage line that was cut. Is that um, is that in the uh, let me see. Where where's that line? Are you talking about the Zaporizhia? So we have this interesting, uh, let me see here. We got this map. Let me see if I can get the, uh, see if I can get the, um, what's, what you might call it, the EAMs. See if I can get the EAMs going. Let me first check on the latest news. Um, we have another picture here. We have another picture. Let me get that up on the screen. We have another picture of the dam. Um, let me see. Got another picture of the dam here. Wow. Absolutely insane, guys. And you heard it first right here on the NY Prepper channel. Wow, guys. So many pictures coming in now. Look at this. Here's a new picture. Check it out. Wow, that's just absolutely insane. Look at that. That's just crazy. 
Wow. Wow. Absolutely crazy. I'm just speechless right now. I'm still trying to process this this information. This is crazy. I'm still trying to process this. Wow. Pretty serious situation, I would say. I don't think this was a minor attack. Wow. So we got some crazy stuff going on here, guys. Absolutely crazy. I'm trying to fit all these pictures in. I don't know how to fit them in, but I'm trying my best. It's just insane. Just looks insane. You can see the fireballs, the huge fireballs. It's just crazy. Wow. Um, so let me catch up on some of the news. Uh, during a large scale missile attack on Ukraine at 510 in the morning, the overhead line D PL 750 kilovolt Dnipropska, which connects the temporarily occupied Zaporizhia nuclear power plant with the unified energy system of Ukraine was disconnected. Currently, the largest nuclear power plant in Europe is connected to the Ukrainian power supply system only by the power transmission line PL330 kilovolt. This line was recently repaired. So their main power line, wow, guys, emergency alert, emergency alert, uh, main power line to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is, has been cut. The main power line, the, the 750 kilovolt power line has been cut to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Wow. Wow, this is very bad. Very bad. This is not good at all, guys. Very bad. So they cut the main power line. They cut the main power line. We don't know what they were after, though, Rabbit. That's just your speculation. We don't know what they were after. We have no idea. Yeah, this could be it. This could be it. Ukraine, this could push Ukraine over the edge. Ukraine may launch a retaliatory strike now. This could push Ukraine over the edge. A Adam Tannehill, thank you for the donation. Wow. Get some number 10, number 10 cans on me. Follow Greg's feed to the food get it now 50 handshakes to you my friend for your time efforts and commitment love you brother you rock thank you adam i really appreciate the kind words 
and the donation. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's a very generous donation. I really, really appreciate that. Um, what's happening tonight? All the latest information is at the top of the screen uh, in the ticker. But uh, basically, uh, Russia they they hit the Zop they hit the Dnipro Dam and then they cut a power line to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. So all the major breaking news is at the top. All right, so all the latest information is at the top and bottom of the screen in the news tickers. Hopefully you can see them. Uh, this way I don't have to keep repeating myself when someone asks what's going on. But uh, we have some major breaking news. As you can see, we have pictures on the screen here uh, of the damage to this um, dam. And uh, here's the latest picture look at this look at this guys so it looks like they hit I mean based on what I see you can see they hit the turbine hall it looks like but then they also hit the actual dam itself on the top there um, and you can see there's actually like what appears to be like rubble but I don't know if that was already there but they actually hit the top of the dam you can see where the fires are burning and then they hit the uh, turbine hall um, so let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about so right here okay this would be the uh, 
this would be the turbine hull right there. They hit the turbine hull and massive smoke coming out of it. And, uh, and then here you can see these huge fireballs. Look at that. That is just insane. Wow. Look at that. So pretty serious um, strike. So you can see the fireballs right there. And then the turbine hall right there. Okay. Um, so yeah, it looks like they were trying to destroy the whole dam. Plus they were also trying to destroy the, um, they were trying to destroy the actual, the dam itself, which would melt down, which would cause the whole river to flood. And all the water would go down towards the nuclear plant. Can this dam break? Yeah, it could definitely break. Yeah. It could definitely break. Absolutely. It could definitely break. So, um, very serious situation. And uh, is this, this is within Russia. This is when you, Ukraine. Ukrainian border. This is on Ukraine's side. So, yeah, it would definitely, exactly, it would flood. It would, it would definitely flood the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. It wouldn't maybe flood it. It would definitely flood it. Um, yeah, I can check right now how old it is. I can check right now. It's the Dnipro Hydroelectric Station. Um, it was first built in 1927 to 1932. And then it, during World War II, German forces blew it up in 1943. And then it was rebuilt from 1944 to 1950. Um, so as old as 1950, essentially. Although the it was actually started in 1927 and then they fixed it up after World War II. And then they built some kind of uh, electric station there in, from 1969 to 1980. Um, but they actually started construction on it in, in the 1930s. There's actually a picture here of them building it in the 1930s, which is pretty insane. Um, absolutely crazy. So it's very old. It's, you know, 100 years old. So, yeah, if that dam breaks, I mean, that would be, that would be really, really bad. And it, who knows, it, it may still break. I mean, we don't know what, the extent of the damage. Sometimes it takes a little while. You know, sometimes it takes a little while to, uh, for the dams to break. They don't break right away. But, uh, yeah, we have breaking news that the main power line to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, the Dniprovska power power line was uh, taken down. Um, so there's only one power line connecting the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. I'm just going to check some information now. Wow. 
Apparently, the U.S. has urged Ukraine to halt attacks on Russia's energy infrastructure, warning senior Ukrainian intelligence officials that drone strikes risk driving up global prices and provoking retaliation. This is coming from the Financial Times. Wow. Look at how weak our, our administration here is just so freaking weak. That's what they do is they scold Ukraine. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Blank man says industrial concrete background years is if there's crap 30 years. Yeah, it's an old it's an old dam. It's from the 1930s. It's a very old dam. Um, it's from the 1930s. There's pictures of it when it was built in the 30s. I'll see if I can uh, share a picture with you guys. So this is the uh, dam in 1934. That's what the dam looks like. Okay. That's what the dam looks like in 1934. So yeah, this is crazy, guys. It's a very old, very old dam. It's very prone to uh, breaking. So... Almost a hundred years old and they rebuilt it a few times, but still that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. So there you have it, guys. Let me see uh, what else is going on. Um, let me check and see some other headlines here. Um, but yeah, the, the U.S. has urged Ukraine to halt attacks on Russian infrastructure. Wow. The U.S. has urged Ukraine to halt attacks on Russia's energy infrastructure, warning senior Ukrainian intelligence officials that drone strikes risk driving up global oil prices. Yeah, the, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant could melt down. So the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant only has one, one uh, power line now. That's not good.
Very bad news. Very bad news. Very bad news. Uh, let me see what other news do we have here. Um, just going to start going through. Uh, we have some video footage coming out of Kharkiv. I don't know if I want to show it or not. Um, they hit some kind of warehouse. Let's see. Oh, there's actually a video. There's actually a video here uh, showing this this attack on the dam. Wow. ZNPP is on the verge of a blackout. This is very bad news, guys. Very bad news. So let's see. This is what we know so far. Uh, in Kharkiv, 15 missiles hit the energy system. There's almost an entire blackout in the city. Uh, problems with water, heat, and internet. In Zaporizhia, there were 12 missile strikes. There's damage to infrastructure. Seven houses were completely destroyed. 35 were damaged. Uh, people have been injured. And... Um, in Odessa, there's been uh, some missile activity as well. In uh, Dnipro, there's uh, kabooms being reported. There's problems with the lighting in the city. Uh, in Venezia, there was some hits. Khmelnytsky, ivano frankivsk there were also hits. And um, let's see, there's this nice map that someone sent to me. Uh, where we can look at where all the hit missile hits were showing some of the fires but I don't I don't know exactly how accurate it is it'll show some fires um, this is a good map actually it's just hard to tell which fires are brush fires or not and which which are uh, are actual real fires um, see here So this is a map showing all the fires in uh, in Ukraine. Now, what's interesting is there's some fires all the way here in the Ukrainian Carpathians, but it's hard to tell if those are forest fires or not. Let's see, there's one fire here in Kush Kushnitsa, Kushnitsia, Kushnitsia. Let me see if I can get the uh, satellite uh, they don't have any I was hoping they could you could see satellite pictures here but I don't know if this is a uh, forest fire brush fire it's hard to tell oh you could see a couple of red dots here in western Ukraine I know they hit Ivano Frankivsk but I'm not sure about like this fire here. That could just be like someone burning brush in their yard or something. But here you can see like uh, in Dnipro, Zaporizhia, there's fires here. This is where they hit that bridge. So then there's some fires here in Krivi Re. Check that out. We got some fires in Krivi Re. 
and this is not going to show all the fires because clearly you know the bridge is on fire right now based on videos but um it's not showing the fire there it's showing it somewhere off to the right um and then we have some fires up here Kamyanskie and Petrivkivka Petrikivka so some fires in uh, Kharkiv region some fires in Kiev so I'm going to see if I can uh, get the flight tracker up on the screen. Um, I think for now I just want to study these pictures for a sec. Um, here's another picture. Yeah, we're hearing that the damage is extensive. We're hearing that there's extensive damage to, this, to the Dnipro Dam. They... they targeted the actual dam and the control building the fire is raging and the damage is extensive so let me see if i can uh, get this other picture up we have another picture here the pictures just keep coming in So here's a new picture just came in right now check it out so they tried to actually take the whole the whole dam down if there's fires burning here they were trying to take the entire dam Trying to crop this picture here so we can put it on the screen. Wow. This is absolutely insane, guys. Look at this. Wow. So the damage is reportedly extensive. Um, the, the Dnipro hydroelectric plant extensive damage extensive damage being reported We have some video footage coming in. 
from uh, Dnipro of the missiles flying over. Um, looks like the airspace is clear right now. Supposedly. There's sporadic power outages right now in Dnipro. Wow. This is insane, guys. Um, I'm just combing through all the info. I'm just combing through all the info here. A lot of stuff. Let me just see what's going on with the flights real quick before I get bogged down with all that crap. Um, let's see here. Do we have any E6s up? Let's see if there's any E6s in the air. Uh, looks like the air... Sp it looks like for now the strike may be over. It looks like... Well, not necessarily... There's one of those aerial refuelers that's le it's leaving Poland, the one that was patrolling. Um, it's now leaving, but it looks like there's another one that's going to take its place. So they're expecting potentially more. Um, potentially more strikes. I'm going to see if I can get the uh, the EAMs going. Bailey says, I, so when I woke up to a B2 st streaming overhead yesterday, it probably wasn't not. I don't know what you mean by that. I wonder if Putin was waiting to attack until after the elections. Probably, yeah. Probably. Or maybe he just got furious because of all the activity by the uh, Russian partisans. You know, they've been they've been attacking Belgorod and southern Russia. The partisans have been attacking. Um, Amy King says, hey, Greg, some are asking if you can change the letters to black on the yellow ticker. They can't read it in the white letters. Oh, yeah, I can do that. That's a good idea. Um, black would be better. Yeah, I can do that. Hopefully now you can see it better. Should be better now.
So very serious situation going on right now, guys. Um, very serious situation. Russia is trying to goad France and NATO into a more direct response so they can invade Poland and Lithuania. It's possible. It's very possible. Colby says, I have urgent information. Check your email. Sounds good. Thanks for letting me know. Um... Uh, I'm going to be just, I'll be back in a sec, guys. I got to step away for a minute. I'll be back in a few minutes. Stand by.
All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, yeah, looks like the all clear has been given. Um, looks like the all clear has been given. So at the moment, there's no threats. Um, let's see, we have some video footage here. Uh, let me see if I can get some footage here. So we got footage coming in from this uh, strike here. I don't know if, can you guys hear that, the uh, missile? I don't know if, if there's any audio. Um, I don't know if, can you guys hear that? Yeah, okay, you can hear it. So, uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, So there's some of the pictures. Um, I don't know if do you guys want to look at those pictures, or should I should I put some cameras on or something? Um, I'm gonna check and see. You can hear it, okay? Yeah, that was a cruise missile. It wasn't a hypersonic missile. That was just a regular regular cruise missile. Do I watch Nostradamus? I don't watch Nostradamus, but I'm familiar with it. I, I know some of the main points. Um, Campbell Clan says, I'm glad I didn't live when we had to go to the outhouse at 2 a.m., especially if you lived in bear country. Yeah, that's true. Very true. Yeah, or if it was freezing outside. Imagine going outside when it's like 5 degrees. Man, that wouldn't be fun. So um, the latest news is that it uh, looks like this strike basically hit all, all of Ukraine was hit every single every single part of Ukraine um, and the biggest thing is they they cut the line the main line that goes to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant um, they wanted to take out the uh, bridge. It looks like here uh, let's just look at this one picture closer um, you can see here you can see here they destroyed this whole section look that whole section was destroyed and there's fires up top so they hit this dam with multiple missiles we're not talking about just one missile here. We're talking multiple 
multiple missiles there. Um, so you know that's a pretty significant, pretty significant damage there. Very significant. I mean, obviously, it looks like what they were trying to do was get revenge on Ukraine for targeting the Crimean Bridge. Um, They actually it looks like they hit the uh, the engine room of the Dnipro of the Dnipro power plant. So they took that whole power plant down. If they hit that engine room, um, you know, they hit the engine room. So the whole the the power plant basically uh, it's not working anymore. So, um, extensive damage, it looks like. Extensive damage. Like if we look at this one, this one picture here, for instance, let me see if it might be too big. You could see they um, they hit the engine room, so they damage they damage the power plant. That power plant's not going to be working anytime soon. So. You know, extensive damage was done. They they damaged the engine room. Um, that's pretty serious damage to that power plant. Um, so, Wow, very sad situation, guys. Very sad, sad situation. Let's see, I'm just checking uh, some of the latest news here. Oh yeah, we have a new a new video coming from the uh, dam. We have a new video coming from the dam. Let me share that video. Let's see if I can get that up. get this uh, video going here.
Crazy situation, guys. Absolutely insane. It's hard to fit all these pictures in. It's hard to fit them all in. Um, let me see here. Uh, Got a video coming out. Let me see if I can share this. Got a video here. Let's watch this video. You can actually hear it sounds like either the water still flowing or something burning. That dam could still rupture though. There's a lot of smoke there. Look at all that smoke. Lots of smoke here. You see that? Yeah, it doesn't look like... It looks like a very serious strike. Wow, look at that guys, just absolutely insane. Okay, you can hear it. EAM coming through. Let me get the EAMs going. I can get the EAMs going. Uh, I'm going to get the EAMs going here shortly. So, uh, you know, pretty interesting, pretty interesting. Um,
so they definitely damaged it uh, that's for sure they definitely damaged it Yeah, we're very concerned right now about the uh, Zaporizhia nuclear power plant losing uh, electricity now. Um, looks like if looks like the um, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is on the verge of potentially uh, losing all power. which would be really bad. Um, no problem, Rod. No problem. After Ukraine, who is next? Yeah, that's the big question. Reports are there that three thermal power plants, one in Venezia and two in Kharkiv, as well as the Dnipro, HPP, and Zaporizhia were hit. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. I'm hearing the same thing too. Rob says NATO has to take Russia out. There's no other choice. Um, most dams are hollow. It's going to take a lot of flex tape. Yep. Yeah, it's... it's um, So when World War III kicks off, where are we all meeting to form our new survivor colony? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. Something's going on on Twitter. Twitter's not allowing information to come out. They're censoring. Isn't that funny? Isn't it funny Mr. Mr. Elon Musk is censoring free speech Mr. Free Speech Elon Musk is censoring free speech now. Isn't that interesting? Just checking to see if there's anything here I missed.
Uh, we're hearing that, uh, according to the German energy minister, Russia carried out the largest attack on Ukraine's energy in recent times. There were 12 strikes on the Zaporizhia area. Um, looks like they hit multiple multiple facilities. Looks like we had a long emergency action message come in. Let me see. Uh, let me check the EAMs. So it might not be over just yet. emergency action message coming in let me see if I can uh... can you guys hear that I don't know if you guys can hear that or not let me see if I can uh... Can you guys hear that? Yeah? Okay. Can you guys hear that? Okay. Okay, yeah, so I got the EAMs working now. coming in kind of weak right now.
Yeah, they're transmitting a message now. It's just that it's it's coming in choppy because it's far away. And it's not picking up that good, but... So it's out of reception, but that's an EAM coming in. was 140 character message wow 140 character message that's insane so uh looks like there was extensive damage done to this this plant but 142 character message that's very long that's a very long eam
Yeah, I think something is about to go down for them to be broadcasting this again. Another EAM in the middle of the night. Um, that's very serious. So yeah, it's definitely not over. Um, I think Russia is going to reload and strike again um, for sure. That's why they're transmitting these options. And now we know why all those nuclear uh, warplanes were in the air yesterday. If you watched my, uh, my update, well, actually it was this stream. It was the beginning of this stream, actually. Um, there were like six nuclear warplanes in the air today, and uh, now we know why there were so many in the air. You know? So, uh, that's very serious, guys. This is a very, very serious situation. Um... Oh man, it's a crazy situation. So uh, I wonder if maybe I'll get some cameras going here. I think we've seen these pictures enough. What do you guys think? I'm going to see if I can uh, get some cameras here. Uh... I'm going to see if I can get some cameras going. I don't know. I was thinking of maybe uh, leaving the stream up. I don't know. What do you guys think? Leaving it up overnight. I don't know. Every piece I own has a story behind it. A person, a memory, or a time in my life. Yeah, I would say that I am more of a minimalist, a staple piece kind of girl. The special thing about this collection, I can be sitting here in a jean and t-shirt and still have some. Trying to get these cameras going here. Um, for NATO to act as an alliance, they need to have an existential threat. Yeah, they do. Absolutely. They do.
just trying to get these cameras set up here so you guys have something to watch otherwise it might be a little boring See, the Estonia cameras are covered in fog, so there's not much to really see there. It'd be nice if I could get the Riga map, the Riga one working. EAM seem to be quiet right now. Anyone else having issues with their ring cameras tonight? Um, not that I'm, I don't have a ring camera, so I can't tell you, but, um, EAMs are classified, but depending on length and repetition, time of day can tell us if something is going on. was interesting for that uh, EAM those EAMs there 142 characters you see I'm gonna get some cameras from uh, Russia let's get some cameras from Russia now uh, okay
Uh, am I going to go to bed? Not right now. I'm going to be going soon, though. Yeah, I'll be going soon. I'm um, just trying to set up these cameras here.
me see what you guys are saying in the chat here. Um, maybe I'll uh, speed up the chat a little bit. I think 30 seconds maybe is a little, little too slow, or is it good? Um, they didn't take the whole dam. Um, they did not take the whole dam, no. Let me see, maybe I'll put a picture up back on the screen so you can see the latest here. Thank you. 
Looks like we got another EAM coming in. Let me know if you guys can hear that. Looks like we got another EAM coming in. Looks like we heard we heard some EAM coming in here. They were just they were just reading it off. It, it barely came in. I'm gonna keep it on. Uh, I just I just had it muted for a sec, but I'm gonna keep it on. Um. trying to get these cameras up and running Yeah, they're reading some some uh they're reading some EAMs right now. It's just my my SDR is not picking them up that well. I'm sure Lee's probably picking them up good cuz he's got his own he's got his own thing. His own uh antenna. This was earlier for those of you guys just tuning in. Got a lot of cameras back up. Uh, just got to get some more of the skull cameras.
Lodges with a test count. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. This is Lodges out. What do you guys think of the cameras? I got a lot of cameras here. I had some cameras of uh, Riga, but they're not working for some reason. I had a camera of Riga, which is in uh, Latvia. But it looks, I have basically everything covered here. Uh, I wonder if I should just get rid of the Estonia camera because it's... It's foggy over there. I don't know if we're going to really be able to see much. Um, what do you guys think? But uh, I got a bunch of cameras from Russia, as you can see. I can get the buzzer going. I know some of you guys don't like it, but I'm gonna I think I'm gonna get the buzzer going. Uranium out. All patients, all patients, this 
This is Iranian Zulu, Zulu, Era, India, War, I, Zulu, Zulu. Another message. Wow. Wow, another message. still sending messages out that's not good it means something's going I on again, this is uranium uranium for traffic wow for there to be EAMs this is uranium out EAMs this 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 late at night is pretty weird and all the nuclear war command and control plates. Three, two, one, two, three, two, one, Puerto Rico out. All stations, all stations, this is Geranium, Geranium, break. Thank you. 
61 characters. just geranium geranium was the call sign that was 61 characters yeah launch codes yeah uh, I don't know I don't think they're launch codes but they're definitely uh, attack options that are being broadcasted and for them to be broadcasting that much at this time is very weird so something's going on I'm not sure what's going on but uh, it's pretty concerning
I can't believe how many emergency action messages are still coming in. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean a launch is imminent. Uh, they're just repositioning targets. That's right. Yep. Doesn't necessarily mean a launch is imminent. Um, so... Got more coming in. Something's coming in right now. Sounds like we have another one. Sounds like another one coming in right now. Yeah, it is really weird to be getting that many this time. It's just absolutely insane. It's really bizarre to get them this late. I totally agree. Really strange. Um, very strange. Looks like we got something coming in. I think there's going to be more strikes, guys. I think there's going to be more strikes. Um, I think this is just, this strike was just the beginning, basically, and I think we're going to see more. That's why the EAMs are still going off. Um, See if I can get the flight tracker on the screen and track some flights maybe. Um It's pretty quiet on the flight tracker now. There's actually a a tanker Oh, there's two tankers going to Poland, looks like. Got two tankers going to Poland. Let 
We have some uh, Putin's Putin's doomsday planes in the air. I missed where that strange plane landed. The one that came all the way from uh, all the way from London looks like it went to Tashkent. Yeah, went from London to Tashkent. Interesting. It's very interesting. That was the uh, earlier the earlier one. So uh, I think I'm going to go to sleep soon, guys. Um, it's getting very late here. It's like 4 a.m. So uh, I'm probably going to leave. I don't know if I'm going to leave the stream up or if I'll shut it down. Um, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Mocking Jay says, I can't sleep. I feel like something is about to go down. Yeah, me too. 
feel like something's about to go down also do we have nuke sniffers up now um no we don't have nuke sniffers up right now um we don't have anything up in the u.s let me uh get my let me get the tracker up uh you know i think i might get rid of the estonia camera for now because it's foggy i think i'm gonna hide it uh you can't really see anything on it so I'm going to just get rid of it. And I'll put the flight tracker up instead. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me see. Let me get the tracker up on the screen here. See if I can get it up on the screen. Got some activity over Poland. Strato tanker looks like it's landing in Poland. We have this NATO AWACS plane over eastern Germany. That's pretty unusual. Look. Flying over eastern Germany over Berlin. I don't know if there's some meetings that's supposed to go down in Berlin or something today. I don't know. Um but we do have some uh, Russian special flight squadron planes Not much, not, not much too interesting to report on the flight tracker. Just have these, uh, got like these, um, what is that, a uh, Russian doomsday plane going east and then an AWACS and a KC-135. Nothing super interesting. Um, so, uh, I don't know, I think I might just, I don't know if I should leave the stream up or shut it down. What do you guys think? I'm going to, I'm going to start going to sleep soon. Um, uh, but we had several, several, uh, EAMs. They might have transponders off. Yeah, that's true. Let me see if there's any updates. Um, leave it up. Let's see. We got some pictures from coming out of Belgorod. Crazy, crazy shelling coming out of Belgorod today. Um, wow. Some really crazy shelling going on think I should leave it up shut it down and get sleep yeah there's not much going on with the flight tracker now we do have that Russian doomsday plane uh, but let me see 
see. Let's see here. Nothing super crazy. Uh, geranium, geranium, standing by for traffic. Uh, geranium standing by for traffic. So looks like they're gonna call another another EAM. Is gonna... Again, this is geranium, geranium. <laughs> yep, another EAM's coming in. Got some crazy, uh, got some crazy footage. Coming out of Belgorod. What's going on, Andrew? Coming in from Perth. How's it going, Andrew? What's going on, Deb Brown? How's it going, Becky Heffernan? Yeah, an EAM is an emergency action message. It's, uh, it's a nuclear attack option that's broadcasted by the U.S. military. That's what it is. So... It's a nuclear attack option. Yeah, it's hard to go to sleep with all this going on. Um, apparently there were warning sirens in Belgorod. Looks like Ukraine might have attacked Belgorod in response. The, White, the Financial Times is reporting that the White House has grown increasingly frustrated by brazen Ukrainian drone attacks that have struck oil facilities. Wow. Could I please give an update? Um, yeah, most of the information is in the top and bottom of the screen, but yeah, there was a massive missile strike uh, in Ukraine and um, they hit the uh, Dnipro power plant uh, the, the dam on the Dnipro River. Let me see if I can get the picture here on the screen.
They hit the dam last night. The Russians hit the dam. And also, there was a power line. The main power line that goes to the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant had its it was cut. So now the 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 uh, Zaporizhia nuclear power plant basically is only running on one power line on its backup line. So. That's pretty serious. So I don't know yet if I'm going to leave it up overnight or if I'm just going to shut it down. I don't know. Uh, I might just leave it up. I'm not sure. Not sure yet what to do. Probably, um, I don't know, I'll probably just, I don't know, I may just shut it down, I'm not sure. I don't know how many people are going to watch. It's the middle of the night, so. Um, Jeff Roberts, how's it going, Jeff Roberts? White House is responsible for all of this. Good night, Amanda. Thanks for tuning in. How's it going, Andrew from Perth? Campbell clan is still up. Yeah, I told you guys it would happen. Yeah, I said something was going on. U.S. nuclear forces were on high alert. Now we know why they were on high alert, right? Now we know why. So. Now, now we know why. Look at that, guys. That's insane. Wow. Unbelievable. U.S. media is scrambling. Yeah, so I think I'm going to shut it down, actually, guys. Uh, I'm going to shut it down, and um, I'll be back tomorrow with an update. Once I get up, um, I'm going to get some sleep now.
Yeah, that dam looks crazy, doesn't it? Look at that. That looks insane. Good night, Brian. PA City Prepper. Mockingjay says you can't waste any more time with mainstream media. I totally agree. Thank you, uh, Robert, for the support. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for all your support. Um, yeah, I would leave it up, but usually when I leave it up, nobody watches, so I'm not going to leave it up. And There's like people end up not watching, really. So Yeah, the dam may still fail days later, exactly, because it's already... It's already been weakened. Dobranoc, Dobranoc, Northland. Yeah, it's already been weakened, so it could definitely fail. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I'll be back tomorrow with more updates. This is a really serious situation, guys. I'm very concerned about this. So, thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for all your support. Hill Walker. You too. Get some sleep too. Thank you. Um, so yeah, this is insane. Crazy situation. Um, but yeah, it could still, the dam could still fail. You know, it could definitely still fail. Absolutely. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for all the support. I'll be back tomorrow with an update. As soon as I get up, I'll do an update. I'm sure there's some new news that's come down, that's come out already. Thank you, Dolores, Joe Patterson, Joseph Agostinello, Allison Treese. Thank you, Allison. Appreciate your support. So take care, God bless, and don't forget the three P's. Prepare, practice, and persevere.